This week's episode of One of a Kind with RVD is presented by Get Blitzed. That's get-blitz.com. Get Blitz Let's Aid is nano-infused THC syrup, and it is a premium cannabis-infused syrup formulated with nanotechnology for fast-acting effects. And you can get 15% off your order when you head to get-blitz.com and use promo code RVD. Get 15% off. Head to get-blitz.com, promo code RVD, 15% off. It's one of a kind, baby. Yeah. Hey, Rob, what's happening? What's up, dude? Happy podcast day. Happy podcast day. And it's a Thursday yeah. so for Mr. Thursday night. Yeah. Good have... to be here, Rob. Good to be Man, here. I've... Yeah, I've been uh, hearing more and more from uh, fans and my peers that they like our show. That's awesome. So, so getting some good feedback, huh? Straight. Yeah, that makes me uh, look forward to doing it more. I don't feel like we're doing it for no reason. We're uh, keeping some people going. In fact, in fact, uh, this is exactly what uh, one of my friends called to tell me that he liked the podcast and I hadn't talked to him in a long time. And I said, dude, you want to be on this week? What the hell? And hey, said, yeah, well, sure. <laughs> so put my gangster friend on, if you would, please. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Mustafa from the hey, gangster. Man, what's going on? Shit. Mustafa. Yeah, man, yeah. What's up, Rob? Shoot. Yeah, man. So, yeah, you were just you were just uh, messaging me to or calling me to tell me that you, that you watch the podcast and you like it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, man, it, it's straight, oh. man. You you know you don't you don't pull no punches. That's the good. Part. <laughs> yeah, so I thought let's have you on, dude. Have a little right. discussion. That's awesome. It's not all stiff, you know what I'm saying. When you go to punches, you know what I'm saying. So it's all mm-hmm. good. I know Mustafa for a long time. You remember? Yeah. Do you remember when we met stuff? Man, when we, when we WCW one. Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was. We uh in uh, uh the, the panhandle there. What's that called? Um the um in Florida yeah. in Panama yeah. Beach. Panama yeah. Beach. Right. Yeah, we were down there, um a house show in uh in WCW. Right. And uh, Mustafa and I oh you know what? I think I just told this story. Wow. Hey, Dom, didn't I tell the story about when I was riding with Bill Dundee and Two Cold Scorpio was driving? Yeah, yes. He was, I love the synchronicity. How crazy is that? 93, 93, man. That's the trip. That was on the way down there to uh, Panama City, and Scorpio was rolling while he was driving, and Bill Dundee was like, as long as you can handle it, kid, don't be getting (laughs) fucked up in the ring. And Mm -hmm. anyway... Yeah, anyway, we went down there and then I worked uh with Mustafa and that's uh right. that's right. And you remember what was special about that match? The lights went out. Mm. What? The lights yeah, the went, lights out. went out. And I was super I was super green. I was super green. I, I was too. To do. Yeah. We said to do what to do and he gave us a spot. <laughs> We were proud of ourselves, man, yeah. that we were able to <laughs> yeah. the lights went out, people yeah. are like, ooh, all this shit and Grabbed a hold, did whatever we did, and right. uh, afterwards we got a little pat on the back, you know, for being able to uh, to come through it. And uh, and it was like it wasn't like pitch black; so you could still see some. So you can still uh, see a little bit, right? Let's yeah, see. yeah. So I don't think we just sat, but right. maybe we, that was mostly what we did. But uh, anyway, yeah. So that was. Uh, now, was this a taping or a house show? House show. Uh, house show. Yeah, probably. February uh, of 93. Yeah, about 93, right. January or February. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was straight, man. Uh, I was, man, I, I was telling uh, Rob man, uh, and everybody, man, uh, I was, I, man, I'm, I'm green. I was green. Okay. <laughs> I was in line talking about how great I was and I was a great worker and all that. I, was green. <laughs> I, had, to, I had to go hide in, uh, behind, uh, uh, you know, like we go in the bathroom. I hear Flair and Arn Anderson and all them talking. I'll go uh, hide in the bathroom, sit in one of the stalls, and say, "Oh shit, that's how they do that." Okay, yeah, yeah. I come out I like I like I don't wipe my ass and everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, on toilet right. paper. <laughs> yeah, you know, what I'm saying? Take on the on your heel of your shoe and shit. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
Um, I used to not ever want to admit that I was green when I was green, though. Like, to me, that was an insult. I thought if someone said, hey, you're green, I thought, yeah, I would take it like they were saying that yeah. I was, I'm not green, you know, even though I was yeah. green as fuck, yeah. Could never admit it, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Gene Anderson always told me, man, one of my my middle name was a couple times, you're the shit, kid. <laughs> But, uh, he, but he always worked with me, though. He kept working with me and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, and uh, finally got it right, you know. But he's still, he's still always learning. He's still always learning, especially with these youngsters, too. The way they are, man, shoot, it's different. Yeah, very much so. Right. So, yeah, I, I did a, I looked up, and, yeah, you were trained by Gene Anderson, correct? Gene Anderson was my trainer, man. How did you guys meet up? Every day. How did you guys meet up? Uh, and I called him on a, I called him on the phone, man. Uh, from the, I was in the Air Force at the time, mm -hmm. so I called him and said, uh, "How much is it going to be to try out?" And he gave me the price and everything. Hell, I couldn't get there yet at the time, so he said, "When is the next one?" So I, I flew back in and tried out. I didn't make it. Wow. So we, was doing, we was doing 600, 800 squats. Man, I was I was power lifting at the time in the Air Force. And I, I I switched over from boxing to powerlifting, and then man, they got my ass whooped when I got when I when I got there. So I had six more months to get myself together, and I flew back again. Then I made it, you know. Then he trained me after that. What'd you think of him as a trainer too? Overall, oh man, uh, he was straight. You know, um, he told me like it is. Man, he told me how the business is. He told me, um, you know, uh, how it is with race and everything, and. Uh, he wasn't playing. He told me, he said, but I'll make sure you're on them cards, though. You're going to be good enough to be on those cards. You might be main event if you put you put your mind to it. But you don't be the shits all the time, though, kid. You know? <laughs> uh, so that, that was the funny part, though. What was your first match like, Mustafa? Uh, man, I, my right leg was dead. I couldn't mm -hmm. even, man, I was so blowed up. Uh, uh, and I was, that, that's where I learned how to sell. You know, a lot, a lot of guys, he said, well, hell, they don't sell that much. I, and he said, well, damn, kid, when it come to you, you sell. I said, well, hell, I'm blowing up. That's why I'm, <laughs> that's why I'm selling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, had this, I had this conversation uh, the other day with Matt Riddle, and uh, he was saying this, but it's something that I've always said. You know, right. I, I've said it for years, and he was saying that girls – he was saying they don't look natural selling and reacting like guys do because right. they don't know what it feels like to get hit in the face. Right, right, right. And and I've always it. said that. And, now, and, I, and you know, now they're way better than they used to be, but they used to look unnatural, the, the women, um, and look like it was really hard work for them to try to, you know, pull off uh just going through some of the physicalities and i always said that's because yeah they don't know what it's like to really get hit and that makes it a lot easier to sell right oh yeah hell yeah you know you know the uh, uh, uh the difference is with me what i think it is with the the women uh the way they wrestling and now is that um they actually really want to make some money you know they're not out here just um uh, uh, like they, they, I'm not saying some of the girls in the past wasn't doing that, but uh, these girls here, they they really want to make some money, man, because they know they get their ass cut. You know what I'm saying? So uh, they know it's coming. They, 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 you know that chopping block is a, boy, when it show up, it's a, it's a wrap. I can tell you. So you got you got to be right when you go out there. Yes. Yeah. I feel like everybody, everybody, you know, is uh, in the scared of that same. Uh, execution and 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 everybody works so hard now you know like back back uh in in the 90s uh, especially the early 90s there was a lot of room for talent that really wasn't that good right you don't see that nowadays you know like if if, right. if the fans are really on somebody that probably means they take too many risks and they fuck up too many times and that's something right. about being, being green you got to learn you know when to when it ain't worth it, but right. but there's, it's nowhere near like the people that used to just be. You know they'd have a they'd be big or whatever. It's the promoters thought money, money. Let's have them squash <laughs> our, squash right. all our stars, and then oh that didn't work. That didn't work. Okay. Yeah, 
but but now everybody i mean the bottom of the barrel is like really really talented and just to be on tv nowadays you got to be really good right you know uh Man, what i learned right. was in the 90s what we was doing we have other places to go too so you didn't have to really uh uh kill yourself in, in one spot and then feel all disappointed because they didn't want to use you you know what i'm saying it was about utilizing and making the money you know it was other guys that was in uh WWE and all these other places, but if you knew what to, uh, how to make your uh, maximize your money, you know, uh, and everything, shit, you can go to Puerto Rico, Japan, and all that stuff, and and, and uh, have time to yourself and still making money, you know, and it's still like that now if you know what you're doing. It's all about the hustle too, and how to promote yourself. And today, yeah. like, you see a lot of the younger talent not utilize like the the elements that are given to them from like social media or whatever yeah. and stuff like that. And sometimes they use it to their detriment <laughs> in a lot right. of ways. So you, see what I'm mm-hmm. you know, it's like the merch. You know, the merch can come in. Uh, RVD, no shit. Hey, the, that merch come in, and the next thing you know, man, a little low on the fun. Next thing <laughs> you look on that merch, you got about twenty five thousand dollars up in that account, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're like, whoa, okay, shoot, it wasn't that bad then. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. <laughs> yeah, Listen. definitely. That's part of that's definitely part of the gig, uh, is the uh the merch. And I think I already told this story just last week, Mustafa. You, tell it again. Shoot. you did USWA, right, Tennessee? Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Right. So uh when uh so like when you would go on the loop, there was a photographer there. And he would take pictures of you. And then next week, uh, I think it was Louisville. I don't, but next week, he would uh, show you some proofs. And then next week, right. uh, he would have the pictures. And I think we gave him a dollar and sold them for five, those three by fives. Heels, heels couldn't yeah, sell. Yeah. You were you were probably a heel and couldn't sell it. But when I learned to do that, and that was uh, 19... Uh, 91 i was 20 mm-hmm. years old 20 just 20 so this is before uh, wcw even you were in yeah WCW. oh yeah yeah i i learned i could double my my payoff so yes. i was getting paid you know 15 20 25 bucks whatever right. i could i selling it i would have like double the payoff and and then uh the heels were jealous of me sabu and <laughs> Right, right. judge dread and dango were like it's not right. fair and i'd be like hey man get your own money that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, like uh, we what we used to do was uh, we get there, man, and um, you know, sell anything, man. I, I shoot, I sell. Um, uh, I would have dollar signs, and then I sell them for a dollar or something like that. And then it, it, guy, guy, buy uh, thirty of them or something like that. Hey, man, good luck for you. You know what I'm saying? So thirty dollars, shoot, that that carried a long way when you're doing the, the old school stuff. You know, when you first starting out. You when- know. Yeah, when I left WCW, it was uh, I I I was I went right into running shows with uh, Greg Price. Yeah, and he already been booking for a long time. He knew how to do that, how to secure the buildings and the fundraising organizations and all that. So I would go and get sponsors from the town, and then I would uh, take a percentage of that, yep. and then. Then I'd get paid to wrestle, and then if there was a profit at the end of the show, then I'd split that with him too. Besides yeah. that, I would have two tables full of merchandise at one time yeah. because I get every everything from little yin yang necklaces, right. you know, to throwing stars with suction cups, to, <laughs> yeah, videotapes from the dollar store. They were selling like six packs or whatever, and and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was like two suitcases full. I'd be bringing just to the merchandise table and uh again that's always been a big part of what we do Man. well you know it's always the other you know things too i always had uh with me at times was the legal activities you know so we had some of them you always had customers for that too so <laughs> i was right down the street around the building and you see a couple of people and they'd be like, hey man, I got a little something. So you do know, well, we got yeah. money, man. I give me a little money. So they would break me off something and then I go on and, and, and then come back in the building. And now, then be cool yeah. after that. Yeah. Now I mean you're taking a picture with their camera, so yeah. that doesn't and then uh maybe like just writing signing your name on a you know pictures are sometimes free depending on where you get them or or whatever, but 
um, it's 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 uh, it's a pretty good uh, business end, and the mar the uh, the the margin of uh, profit's pretty pretty good on on that yeah. end when you look at it like that. You know, I mean, obviously, obviously, our time was worth a lot, and that's something that can't be ignored because right. even even to just do like I'm doing a five hour signing on Saturday, but I gotta that takes all day Friday to get right. there, stay the night. There I am Saturday, stay the night, all day Sunday to get home. I'm wiped out for two days afterwards. So that's, you know, that's uh, thrown into what our time is worth to us, obviously. Right, right. You know, yeah. shoot, I, I remember uh, the first time it was, uh, we got up there, it was uh, Sabu, me, it was RV, who, who else we had with us? Was it the, was it the Pit Bulls one night we had a, uh, uh, when, I, when I first got up there with the uh, public enemy, and we uh, uh, kind of hung out a little bit, was you, you remember that night? We, uh, probably, um, probably Pee Wee and Louie. I was so high and drunk, all. but see, that's the thing about it. I can't remember a lot. You know, yeah. I, I stayed, I, I stayed drunk and high a lot, man. And I ain't gonna sit here and lie to the crowd. <laughs> right. I was sober. I wasn't. I wasn't sober a lot. You know, because it was party time when you got the ECW. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and uh, we go to the gym or uh, uh, work out in the somewhere, shit, we'll find somewhere to go, you know. And, and uh, shit, I drink again, get, uh, get the smoking and going on and everything, man, and party, man. And the thing about it was, uh, you know, like like me and New Jack, that was New Jack's gimmick. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm, you know, tell people that. Right. And then uh, uh, another thing too was, shoot, I, I joined in and. Uh, you know, a lot of times they say, yeah, young guys get along. I say, man, we like brothers, man. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you get along and sometimes you don't. Shoot, it's just how it go. And I had it coming a lot of times because I was doing some bullshit too. You know, ain't no, ain't no doubt. But, you know, at the end of the day, when it's time to make that money, we, we you know, we would do it. And, you know, he always wanted to be his individual, which is <laughs> that's what he's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like RVD, he would tag with certain people. And then, but shoot, when it's time, RVD. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So yeah. that's how it goes. You know. How was it working with like New Jack from the perspective of like, oh man, he can be so polarizing in a lot of ways, but also like kind of really pushing the limits and stuff like that. Was it sometimes you're like, oh man, that's a little too much, New Jack? Or how how would that kind of work for you and your dynamic? Oh uh, no, I, I was on uh, autopilot. Yeah, I was on autopilot, so I expected the unexpected. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it never, nothing never bothered me like that. And I was just ready to go and get in, the, get in that business and make that money, man. You know, get in the ring and do what we got to do and draw some money. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's how I was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't no problem with him because, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, um, I knew that that could possibly happen. You know, you get bent out of shape over something. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was okay. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that was him. And, um, yeah, you know, I never tried to stop him. You know, because I, I guess he, you know, he felt right about what he was doing. <laughs> so I just, you know, let it go, man. Shoot, I'm going, I'm going, I'm ready to party, man. She ain't worried about another dude, you know, like that. But uh, you know, because I, you know, I loved him as a brother, and so when you, when you that close like that, you don't, you, you, you let people grow, man. You let them do what they do, man. you know what I'm mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that makes sense for sure. Yeah, right. You have that kind of relationship. It's hard to explain with your tag team. See, RVD. Been uh, he's doing this thing, man. He's been doing this thing. Hey, bro, I'm gonna tell you, I'm always proud of you. Every time I seen you, you, you made up WWE and all that kind of stuff. And I said, I knew he would be there. I knew he would make it. You know, so you know what? Like my one of my earliest memories of you in ECW was uh, when we when I first started there in '96. Yeah. Paul Paul would put two of us to a room. Right. Right, and. Uh, and and you and I were in a were put in a in a room there at the uh, at the travel lodge, and um, there was two beds there. Right. But and I but, and I went out. You know, I was probably eating somos or whatever. Right. Um, and like when I when I came in, like in the you know wee hours of the oh, yeah. late late night or whatever, whenever I came stumbling in. Um, I thought for some, I just I always remember this, and I, I thought it was so funny that um, your bed was completely untouched, and you were sleeping in the fucking chair with <laughs> yeah. your feet 
yeah. like ext extended over like a um, the the footstool or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just yeah, it, it looks so uncomfortable, and I was like, dude, why don't you lay in bed? You know, like I I couldn't understand it, and it just I was just thought that was so funny. Like, did he just fall asleep like that? And then yeah, fall asleep like that military stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, any kind of way, man. You should, you, I could sleep on the uh, rocks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, Thinking your uh, back's gonna be sore, dude. No, right? You know, and it, it never was though. You know, I get up and I'm like, oh man, okay, I'm pretty good, man. Let's go on do this again. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. yeah um, so I remember that time we was in. Uh, we went to Cleveland, and uh, we, we we we. You remember that? You remember that? I don't know what you're gonna say. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Cleveland a lot, so I don't know. Yeah, we went to Cleveland and uh, we were we, we were rooming, and shoot, uh, I mean, we had that AC blasting. You remember that? that it must have been Arctic up in there. It felt good too, boy. Man, I was knocked out up in there, boy. Man. Hey, I got I got a question for you. What's going on? I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard New Jack say this in an interview, yeah. and, and I've heard it repeated, so I know like some people uh, think that it's true, but uh, he said that one time in a room I was partying, and he said that he looked over and you were smoking pencil shavings. I heard that, too. I heard that rumor, too. I, 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 I think I did. Oh, yeah. no shit. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. It, it was, uh, I called bullshit on that, man. So my bad, New Jack. I yeah, thought, right. no, no, right? Because we we had uh, uh well, I was mixing everything, just about, you know, trying you know, it. Say, let's see, see, let's what, try it out. Let's see what's up. Oh, wow, okay, right. Let's see, let's see what's up. You know, let's see how it is. And uh, right. yeah, I did it. Shoot. I ain't gonna lie. Right. Okay, cool. <laughs> I didn't know for sure. I didn't, you know, I'm not a gambling right. man, so I didn't put no money on it. But if I would have <laughs> right. lost that one, do you remember how it was, Mustafa? Uh, well, I, well it had to be horrible. I'm feeling pretty good. I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I can tell you. That. I, you know, the the, the the thing about it was, I stayed loaded. I stayed uh, loaded, man. You know, because uh, I, I love beer at that time, and. Um, uh, shoot, I mean, drink some beer and then boom, hit a doop, 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 and it was yeah. over. <laughs> Let's do it yeah. all night after that. You know, how'd you like Philadelphia being in Philadelphia? I love Philadelphia. I have been going to Philadelphia since I was a kid, really. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, growing up actually in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and uh, we would go to uh, Philly and uh, New York every go to South Bronx, and then how about that and go to Philadelphia and keep it. <laughs> And been going there since I was a kid. Oh my! <laughs> so I knew how the people were when we got there. I knew they were hardcore and everything. You know what I'm saying? So I already knew the the atmosphere. And uh, most people uh, thought that oh, you had to bring it. Am I right, RVD? We had to bring it, right? Yeah, I was intimidated the first time I went. That everything yep. was. I'd never been exposed. Everything hit me at the same time. It was the it was the ECW hardcore style, which was mind blowing. Yes. But it was the music, it was the the vibe that those adult fans had. And and it was even like I remember like when I first got there in ninety-six, uh in Philly, for some reason, I remember going to a nightclub uh, with the pit bulls. Yeah. And it was that same <laughs> it was that same vibe and that ECW was capturing, but it was like real and I was like, I guess this is grunge i don't know i mean i was i was down in <laughs> fucking, i was out in savannah georgia we went we didn't have grunge down there <laughs> right <laughs> right you know crazy. The, the, the mind blowing was, uh with the the pit bulls man they were good people man they good they, they, uh, uh, you know uh gary and gary still uh, you know doing his thing man but uh, they were good people though they were i just saw gary and chilla coffee uh, a oh, couple okay. weeks ago. yeah yep yeah, yeah. good Nice dude. Hey, tell them, tell them the dressing rooms, man. There never been another dressing room like that, right? All right. the stuff in there. Man, right. we had, everything was there. Whatever you needed, it was there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always, when, when people ask what was my favorite time of my career, I always tell them I have to take a, different, a, a perspective on that. You know, right. the most, most fun I ever had was definitely ECW. You know? Right. Um, 
uh, easiest, you know, least amount of work, I, I would say, you know, for, for the money was TNA, but yeah. WWE um, is the, the, the only one that really pumps you out there into every, every household, it seems like, on the planet, <laughs> makes you a really big star and, and loads yeah. you up with merch. And so, so they all had their, their benefits, uh, you know, from different perspectives. But I, the most fun was ECW. And part of that, which is why it couldn't be, um, you know, repeated f for me or whatever, because part of that was building, building up still and being hungry, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and you know the uh, we we put our bodies through a, a whole lot too. You know, a lot of people don't realize that it it, it might have looked like. Uh, I think they realize it, dude. Right. <laughs> I think they know. <laughs> right. You know, sometimes they don't realize. Uh, uh, you know uh, that that some of the guys, man, we lost some good guys too. And I ain't gonna go over right. the names because you know then I ain't trying to make this uh, episode sad. Right, not but, dark side of the ring or nothing. Right, right. We ain't doing the dark side of the ring and all that little bullshit. Yo, Rob, we're gonna take a quick time out just to say that this week's episode of One of a Kind with RVD is presented by Get Blitzed. Get Blitzed Lit A Nano Infused THC Serp is a premium cannabis infused serp formulated with nanotechnology for fast acting effects. And that advanced nanotechnology formulation allows for quicker onset and enhanced potency compared to regular THC syrup. It's Delta 9 and legal, legal in all 50 states, every single one. And you have several syrups to choose from, from Blue Raz to Key Lime Pie to Pina Colada to Tiger's Blood to Cherry to Grape. Just head to get-blitz.com, use promo code RVD, and get 15% off your whole order. Could be a bottle, could be a bundle, your choice. But yes, head to get-blitz.com, use promo code RVD, and it is by Mickey Ray Sinatra and Courtney. Take a look. Head to get-blitz.com, promo code RVD, get 15% off. It's one of a kind, baby. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it was one of those uh, those things, man, where uh, you had to make it happen. You know, and, and I was like, man, I'm not blowing this. We're going to have a good time up here. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and uh, Paul Heyman was uh, 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 cool with what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? He was full of shit sometimes. But <laughs> when, it came down to, when it came down to the bottom line, though, he took care of business, though. So how did he get you into ECW, Mustafa, Paul Heyman? How well, how'd that kind of all facilitate, basically? Man, it's really – New Jack was uh, more uh, in tune with it. Mm -hmm. Because my, my nature is, uh, man, uh, I'm not a wildflower, but uh, I got, uh, you know, if, if things don't quite go my, uh, the way I, I want them to, I I go to the left and do something else. You know what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. over, I went over to Puerto Rico. But the, the, the thing about it was um, we get, Smoky Mountain Run was up. Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, Jim Cornett made a call up to uh, Paul Heyman. And, uh, uh, man, it went from there. I don't know. Next thing I know, we, we jumping in the ring, uh, 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 jumping the public enemy. That's what, that's what I remember. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't go into details and, uh, uh, you know, minute by minute details and stuff like that. But uh, next thing you know, hey, man, we were public enemy. Uh, the, and the cops, they didn't, they didn't they, they, man, it was rough, bro. You know, it was like we was really getting arrested. I was like, damn, I know this is a, a, a damn work, right? Shit. <laughs> you know, because they had some big cops, too, didn't they, RV? Did you see? You remember that, that, that them cops? That night that they supposed to do that to us? Um, what? I I spaced a little bit, dude. I'm no, reading no, the no, chat. When they invaded, when, when yeah, the you know, I'm invaded. talking about some of them cops that was there to, to arrest us that night. And, At the uh, ACW uh, arena? It was huge, man. Yeah. Oh Double no! Guys. I just I yeah, remember yeah. That, I, I remember the fake young cop Eric Coolis. Like I know the dude's name. Like well, these his other name guys is right. in my brain, you know. Right. Uh, these other yeah. guys, man, they what man? They 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 were up, bro. So, but uh, they took care of us after we got out the building. And uh, they weren't just uh, workers from Kansas school. Oh no, he, he didn't have a school yet back then. No, he didn't have that school then. You know what I'm saying? So then I'm gonna tell you what I used to watch was. You know, with RVD and they, they go to the Sabu and then they have Scorpio and those guys. And I was like, 
It's something wrong with them dudes, man. That's why I used to think, man, some of that stuff they were doing. <laughs> yeah. Nah, not me. Probably right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he, they 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 go jump here and they fly over here, and I'm like, whoa, bro. Now yeah. everyone's doing it, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it but it made sense when you guys was doing it, though. Yeah. Now you it's know, yeah. now I see some amazing shit. I'll see the dude do a springboard in the middle and do like right. a double fucking um, uh, shooting star press to the floor, and I'm like. Man, it, I that's amazing, but I I almost think like it's just gonna get lost in the shovel because everyone's doing so yeah. much. Right, it, it's not gonna be like it would have been if that was done, you know, several years ago. People like my my dive out to Bam yeah. Bam Bigelow in the crowd. Oh, yeah. Dude, compare that to a fucking double springboard fucking uh, <laughs> what did I call it? shooting star press to the floor. Right. <laughs> I, I'm going to be a little more impressed, you know, by the other one, but it's just the timing. And uh, I guess, you know, what do they say? We had to, we crawled so they could walk or however, however you <laughs> yeah, say it. Yeah. I mean, I, I have no problem with the, uh, the the youth, what they doing, man. You know what I'm saying? I have no problem with, uh, you know, uh, I do know one thing, though. Their, their knees, and I know them knees going to go in a minute. They better learn how to work. You better learn how to work down the road because one day you ain't gonna be the springboard back in, into <laughs> your knees gonna be like that. No, no, no. Yeah, I wonder if that'll give them a shorter career average. Right. Hmm. And I got yeah, guys yeah. that I train, and they already done. Some of the guys yeah. that, that was doing all that stuff, they already done. They in the. Uh, I'm sixty. Uh, shoot, they 34, 35. They they quit. Okay. Done. I, I would have to think it's an individual kind of thing because I know a lot of these guys uh, were inspired by me. And if I'm the prototype, uh, I've been going like 400 years and still going strong. So, well, damn right. You, well, you, but hell, you RVD. Shit. You, yeah, exactly. I'm one of a kind. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, that's, the, that's the same thing down there. You watch the Luchas, you know, we out in the West Coast a lot. And man, you see some uh, flipping and going, and then you look at it and say, "Man, how old is that dude? Oh, he's fifty-five. I say, "What? You know, <laughs> Still do all that stuff like that? <laughs> you know? What I'm saying? So, so yeah, it's, it's an individual. It's always an individual. You know, they already they already looking at us kind of uh, my, uh, certain people see me and they say, "Man, he still work? He still working?" I say, "Yeah." He said, "Well, I said I'm sixty. What? And I said, "Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep going to the casket drop." You know, what I'm, uh, uh, I'm gonna be a manager. If I can't move no more, hell, I'm gonna be a manager. So I ain't quit. Going with the flow, right? Man, yeah. You can't. You can't do. You know, uh, one thing about it was uh, learning how to work. Um, uh, now nah, I ain't gonna sit there and say I'm some technician and I'm like Dean Malenko or somebody. You know, I, was, I ain't gonna say nothing like that. But the thing about it was uh, working with uh, the rock and roll. Mm, and, yeah, uh, they, they, I remember I told uh, RV this story. So uh, uh, Ricky Morton, he said, "What's one of your favorite moves?" Well, I like to do this reverse Japanese uh, uh, suplex. He said, "How about let's not do that?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so he said, "Do uh, you, you want to work? Uh, uh, how long yeah. do you want to work?" I said, "Man, as long as I can go." He said, "Do you want to work till you're about sixty or 70? I said, "Yes, sir." He said, well, if just follow my lead. I said, yes, sir, let's do it. <laughs> Went out there, man, it was, it, and it was cool, man. And he's right. He's right. Because it was a lot of things that I I could come off the top rope when I was younger. I wish I would. Now, <laughs> hey, got to be some paper. It got to be some real paper to come off that, you know, like, doing all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because, yep. yeah, you know, we never copied each other's style or nothing. Uh, because, first of all, we couldn't. Okay, you know, saying I never tried to copy Sabu or uh, Too Cold, or, and especially RVD. I ain't try that shit. <laughs> that's the real. That's the real deal. It doesn't seem like that's anybody. Did else was doing. I'm, I'm, I'm serious now. Now people think that, that man, we, we we real close. You know what I'm saying? But I'm keeping it real. I looked at some of that stuff and I said, "Man, give me another drink." <laughs> when we be in the back, you know what I'm saying? Give me another drink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Do you see that? And nobody would. I'll be the only one to see it sometimes. You know, I'm not saying everybody in the back wouldn't look at you. Yeah. See he said, see what? Oh, man, get out of here, man. Give me another drink, man. Shit. I know y'all seen that. You know what I'm saying? So he would do this thing where he would hit the top rope, 
do a, a, a somersault over the rail and, and, and what was that, so a splash or something you would do? You I would... said, man. <laughs> nah. Yeah, but you know. so, so now that's how we're looking at Darby Allen. I don't know if you keep yes. up with the product. Yeah, so yeah, now I watch him. I watch him click. So the stuff him. he's doing, uh, he, and even Sammy Gu Guevara, oh, I, yeah. I saw him do. Uh, yeah, a couple. I saw him jump off like a three foot, a three story ladder. It looked like, and and so now that's how we see them. Is it's kind of like whoa, you know, that's yeah, crazy. Like that. But yeah. then they're saying, hey, people are talking about me, you know. Yeah, same family thing. was out there where we was at. And, uh, it's just Catholic. evolved. Yeah, it's just it, it, evolved. It's him, the like, same position. Right. Because I used to tell him, I said, man, I don't want to see you ever again. Because <laughs> you're that good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it, it's like yeah. Jeff Cobb. It's like Jeff Cobb being New Japan. I told yeah. him, if I see you one more time, we're going to really fight. <laughs> yeah. I know you can I know you can wrestle your ass out. You probably shoot on me and shit. But I said, yeah. we're going to fight next day. He was gone after that. <laughs> he, I like watching him. He's good. He's gone. He went to New Japan. I saw yeah. him in Brian Cage uh, at one point at some show in California, and that's when I really took notice of both of those guys years ago, 2016 yeah. actually. And I was just like, "Wow!" Like both the, both these guys, both these <laughs> yeah, guys. They got a chain going down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cobb, Cobb got me in a, a suplex. You know, we work each other. Kyle got me in suplex. He held me up there, man, a good minute. I said, you can let me down now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. They pull themselves man. up just to hold you before they fucking throw yeah, you. Yeah, you can, yeah. Do you can do that twist, too. Just and to I said, show where me. am I going? Where am I going? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they take that bump for him. But, yeah, uh, yeah he, he, he he was something else. I got uh, also uh, J.R. Kratos. He's up in the NWA. Mm -hmm. I've heard he's of him, yeah. With it too. Yeah, he's out there. Uh, we have worked him uh, a few times, and uh, man, he improved a wee more than what you've seen now. So he, he, he got some talent, man. That I went through uh, that, that I'm that I'm proud of. You know what I'm saying? Man, yeah. That's awesome. yeah. Hey, uh, I just want to make a, a quick little comment. I usually, I always yeah. say, I always say, you know, as far as critiquing uh, wrestlers today, I always feel like I do have a lot that I know could help them, but I don't feel like this is the platform to do it. And I don't want to have a seminar or whatever, but, <laughs> but, but, but every once in a while, I just leak out a little something. When you were mentioned, um, uh, Lucha, um, Luchador wrestling, yeah. I just, I just want to say this, uh, it, just in case any wrestlers are, are watching the podcast or listening to it. Um, if you were inspired by Luchador wrestling in this fashion, uh, where you're going to throw the guy off the rope just by giving him a little spank on his back and he takes yeah, off yeah. running. Yeah. I can't take anything that you do seriously after that. <laughs> I don't care if you throw the guy off the rope by yeah. giving him a little fucking spank in the back, in the middle of the back, a little tiny little pat, and yeah. he runs – yeah, back. I'm already. I, I'm not. I'm already. I'm. I'm already turning the channel first up, and I don't care if you jump up and do a triple backflip into a drop kick at that point because <laughs> I just saw the guy take off fucking uh, running and right, and, right. I, and that's disgusting to me. So right, I, you know, I can't lie. So hey, I can't lie though. I, I, I watch it, man. <laughs> I, watch it, man. I, I watch it, man. You know what I'm saying. Because I, I, I try to bite off everything. Yeah, no, it's yeah, definitely I, got I, its fan base. I, 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 I just hate that part about it because <laughs> I hate it. I you know why. Saying, you know why. <laughs> right. Man, you know, the, uh, uh, the, you know, another thing, too, is uh, 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 watching um, Rey Mysterio. Mm -hmm. Because he, he, that's what he was doing. You know, he's doing that, that stuff, man. And... Uh, Man, he evolved. So that night, uh, I think that's when everybody was uh, uh, kind of getting ready to start leaving. R RV, RVD, y'all about to start going up to the, uh, New York. Oh, let's say New York. WWE. Yeah, you know, that's how old I am. Shit, I'm staking potatoes, man. New York. <laughs> in century, you know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, so Ray comes up to me and asks me, he said, man, you think you got a shot in WCW? I said, hell, Ray, I can't do what you do. Shit, hell yeah, you got a chance. Man, go on, take advantage of it, man. Go on, do what you got to do. 
you know? So uh, I was, uh, uh, when I took, this is another thing, though. One thing you got to really watch, too, man, when you're doing these things, man, is people take stuff out of context. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they uh, uh, they had a couple of guys, I ain't going to bring the name. Why the hell I am Monty and Pharaoh. And uh, they had a thing that uh, kind of made me look like I was making, like, uh, Bruiser Brody deserve what he got kind of thing. And uh, and I didn't say that. I said, when shoot, I used to go to Puerto, when I was in Puerto Rico uh, working down there. I used to go to the projects and all that, and you overstep your boundaries, you get your face shot off. You know what I'm saying? And then they get high. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get high and drunk and, and party and stuff too. You know what I'm saying? So you got to know somebody that knows somebody. So, and I told him, I said at the end of the day, if he even knew that something like that was going to happen to him, he wouldn't have went in there. You know, he wouldn't have went in that shower, man. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But I heard, I heard Harley Race. I heard his interview, uh, uh, Bobby Heenan, and. The, the Harley will always give them a warning, brother. You got to watch your attitude the way you, you know, and, and then, but that ain't got nothing to do with me because I wasn't back there with him. But I just liked him because uh, Bobby Heenan said a few things. You can go and, and people need to go, don't quote it from me, go to the tape if you want to see what he said about the uh, uh, Bruiser. But the whole point of it is, Bruiser came to uh, Mid Atlantic mm-hmm. back in the day, and uh, that's where I grew up in North Carolina. So we were, uh, Rip, Rip Hawk, Rick Flair, um, the Anderson brothers, Johnny Valentine, Wahoo, Tiger Conway Jr., you name it. That, that's stuff I remember, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, when Bruiser came in, that's what made me want to actually get into wrestling because everybody was wrestling. And I said, I don't know how I made him. Like, <laughs> cut all this stuff they're doing. But when he came in, he started stomping and kicking and punching. I said, that's me right there. I can do that, <laughs> I can do that part. You know what I'm saying? So so if I ever get a shot like that, I don't care what people – you know, you, you don't worry about what people say about you. Uh, if You, you got to have some thick skin in this business. You already – RVD know. And, uh, you know, they're going to tell you I don't like your work and this and that. But uh, uh, look at me as I go to the bank. How about that? <laughs> That's what it boils down to. Right. I remember I, remember I was doing jobs for WCW and said, uh, some of my partners, they'd be like, man, I don't know, man. I don't know how long your career going to last. Man, wh- what you doing after this? I said, I'm going to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a big check from WCW. Yeah, you know what yeah. <laughs> but it, right. yeah it, people do that because they don't know you as a real person. They only know the image. Right. And the image is going to be compromised if you – keep doing it too long or if you get beat too many times or yeah. whatever that that's bad for them and their impression of you which is what what the image translates to they forget right. that you're actually somebody that picked a damn good career where you can work for fucking decades yeah. and, uh, and not sit in a cubicle right yeah. and yeah. the first part is you catch everybody that used to do jobs now yeah. you can with the social media the way it is now back then you didn't, we, we didn't know Rick Rude was doing jobs. We didn't know. Uh, I, hell, I caught some stuff where Ivan Koloff uh, uh, back in the old days. You know what I'm saying? Ivan Koloff. Get his ass. Oh, paying dues. Yeah, paying but dues. It was, Drew, you know how you know the end of his career end up going. You know what I'm saying? So um, you could um, – I'm going to put it this way. Everybody really do the job when it get down to it. It's about how much money you maximizing. uh when you there. So you either do the job when you're the main event in WrestleMania or you do the job where hell you are just doing a a, a, a house shot. Right. It's the one shot kind of deal. And then get the money. Mm-hmm. Get the money, man. You know, and, and then they'll work it out. If they, they figure you got uh, uh like with with R V D the what I what I see of him was the the fact is is that his style, nobody, nobody could do it. So, of course, he's gonna keep going up to the top. You know, made it all the way up to the top. You know what I'm saying? So, but, 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 but the top to me, it has to that money shit. Hey, yeah. I ain't thinking about. <laughs> Why you go to WWE? Well, I was in the WWE. Oh, for real? I said, yeah, I was jobbing. <laughs> what? Yeah, I was back there with uh, Andre the Giant and all them. What? You know, and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? But it, it boils down to the money, man. You know, uh, and uh, you know, the the ask some of the big time guys. Ask some of the big time guys. They they're 
uh, play it off and everything. But when it boils down to it, they look at that man uh, as I'm looking at RVD and they're going to say, he draws money. Bring him in. <laughs> That's it. Am I right? <laughs> the cream always right, rises. Hey, man, that's that's something, uh, you, you know, if you if you're marketable, then you're in a really good position. Then you got value. If you got value, then if you know how to capitalize on it, you could uh, you could sustain a living. Mm -hmm. Man, for real, though, look, uh, look at the R-Truth. R-Truth came in uh, his, his, his merch is outselling a bunch of people. Right. At one time. Yeah, you know, and uh, he and uh, people said, "Oh man, that's silly. What are you doing?" I said, "No, it not. No, it ain't shit. Not to me." I said, "You know, uh, uh, do what you got to do. You know, uh, I guess you know, like uh, a lot of guys up top that that start making it, they forget about the guys down at the bottom. You know, they forget about those guys. Those guys are helping you become main event too. Mm -hmm. You know, and they forget about that, and they forget about the guys that did jobs for you." And, and things like that too, and so their head swells up, and they get these egos and going on and stuff like that. And now, now they look back now, and they're like, "Oh man, I wish I enjoyed this a little bit better than I did." You know what I'm saying? I I enjoyed myself. I can tell you that. Shoot. Hey y'all, Katie, how are you? Hey, hey, hey baby, hey. this this is my friend Mustafa. Hi. Hey, hey. This is my Hi. wife, Katie Forbes. All right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> he watches the show. He knows. Oh, cool. awesome. Nice I'm to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> I like the Bart Simpson shirt, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, nice stuff. <laughs> Danette's matching me. <laughs> Baby. Right. Are you going skating? To mm -hmm. Oh, is it, you doing the roller derby, Katie? Yeah, we still do that. Oh, that's Come awesome. Show. Look at our outfits. Man, I can't skate. <laughs> I neither can I. Hello. Skateboard. I can ride a skateboard. Can you? I can't even do that. Yeah, yeah, I can do skateboard. I can't do them skate stuff. <laughs> I, I like roller derby, but my passion is skating at the skating rink. Oh no. Nice. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like to skate to music. Man. That's and eventually I'll be dancing while I'm skating, grooving. See, you can be grooving, go. though. See, I, yeah. I can forget that. I just from, look from the sideline. Hey, go on, get your butt. <laughs> That's all I'll do. That's all I can this say. This time last year, I didn't even know how to skate. Rob really? was with me. Oh. At the skating rink in the... the uh, Floyd Mayweather's. Yeah, Floyd Mayweather owns the, sk the skating rink. And then okay. the... Um, yeah. What's it called? The ref like blew his whistle and made me get in the middle of the track because I didn't know how to skate. So that's where the beginners yeah. get. And I was saying, I don't even know how to get to the middle because the traffic was moving so fast that I couldn't even skate. And now I'm a zoomer. Yeah, are you? Yeah. How about that? yeah, it all happened in a year, but I practice a lot. Like I go skating every week. Damn. Oh, okay. That's that, that's what it work. That's what works. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just getting consistent with it. I just sat on a picnic table by um Floyd's bodyguard on the next table. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> what is he about seven foot? The one guy. No, had one small. no the bodyguard. <coughs> uh, yeah, was it? Was the bodyguard about seven foot? He's, he's a big dude. I don't know if he's seven foot, but yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, yeah, yeah. I've seen, seen him at a few places, I guess. I don't know why. Right. And we saw yeah. him at a strip club. He has a strip club called Girl Collection here in Vegas. And he owns that too. And he was like making it rain at his club. And then we see him too at his skating rink. Like, Floyd, not the bodyguard. Yeah. yeah. Right. You yeah Floyd. <laughs> and here's Levy. Oh, Levy's oh, on TV. Oh, man. Oh, man. You made the big time. Made the big time. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. <laughs> yeah. She's very excited about life. Oh, man. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Her and Barbie getting along hey. now too. What's that? Her and Barbie getting along now a little bit. As you said that, they just got a little tussle. Oh, dear. Yeah, really sometimes, about that. sometimes Barbie gets jealous because she's like Rob's. No, Rob's like her number one. Yeah. Yeah. Where are my papers go? Um, Yo, they just like they just like humans, man. That's it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. That's really true. Love you, baby. Love you, baby. <laughs> well, cool. Hey, we got a couple super chats in here too. Okay. Um, so Brock. Summer, thanks for the Canadian 279. He asked, did, did you ever get told that merch breaks cave tape? We kind of talked about that a little bit. Merch breaks cave tape. 
Yeah, yeah for the bad guys. Uh, yeah, way back in 1991 for me in USWA, the uh, Jarrett's promotion, uh, as I was just talking about, the heels were not allowed to sell merchandise. They weren't allowed to uh, be friendly and talk, uh, you know, and get over with the fans. Um, which, by the way, I saw the Rock promo that he did uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh -huh. That he came out with, on Cody. Yeah. yeah. See you. Have fun. I love you, baby. Love you. See you guys. Mm, Bye, y'all. Have fun. fun. Yep, have, take care. And uh, it was it was a really good promo, but he he, he baby faced it, baby faced it, baby faced it, baby faced it. And I told Katie, I said, "Watch though, he's like reeling him in, and he's gonna um, turn on him." You right. know, watch, watch, watch. Okay, well he's still he's getting him in deeper. Then he's oh oh he's leaving a baby face. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Right. Was that when he was in Memphis and he was doing the rock concert, Rob? Yeah. yeah. Baby faced the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, so. I think that it, as, far as, as far as for me was, uh, we, I used to uh, bring uh, some stuff and uh, we go to the clubs and sell it. Oh. You know, so we get into some of the clubs and uh, uh, I'm get my money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shoot, I brought some other stuff up there too. Shoot. You know what I'm saying? Where I would go. But uh, you know, the, and, and I was gonna get my money, man. So I, I didn't go buy it. I know what you're talking about, RVD. But you know, I didn't do that, man. You know what I'm saying? I said I'm gonna get my money one way or the other. You know what I'm saying? So. How about that? All right, good question. Seth chimes in. Thanks for the nine nine uh, nine ninety nine. He says RVD. So CM Punk famously wears controversial political message T-shirts to the ring on TV, like abortion rights and stuff. Maybe you should think about wearing a cannabis rights shirt on TV on 420. Rob, what do you think of that? Well, let me put it this way. What makes you think I haven't? Mm. Right. right. How about that? How about that? Pay, pay attention. Pay attention uh, over the next couple of weeks to uh, a little a little noise that uh, hopefully will get louder by then Ooh. something really cool that uh that we're working on how about that well you know i i, I don't know about the political part you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? now the 420 ain't no problem you know what i'm saying but uh you know cm punk is a, a different mold there so gonna do your thing cm you know? yeah 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 no it is and it is obviously uh rvd 420 related uh, right. Yeah, you know, I've always respected though that about punk. You know, that yeah. I think it takes integrity and discipline, and also just somebody that stands for something is 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 res more respectable on on that basis than people that won't stand for shit and complain about everyone else. You know, right? Well, I, the the thing what I admire uh, uh, about him was he got in that octagon, man. Right. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, how you gonna win or lose? Or, he, he got in there, bro. So there's a lot of yeah. There's, all right, you cool. It's a lot of people that run their mouth about him that would never even fucking make it. You know, right. the first training day, never. Right. And right. people people made fun of him and all that stuff and gave him a hard time. Where it's just like, dude, how much? How difficult would that be to put yourself on a platform as big as that and take the risk of getting beat like that? And you know, yeah, no, everybody, everybody that's in uh, um, MMA competition, especially on that level, like of UFC. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to be like, "Hey, I'm the toughest guy in my school." Let me, let me get. <laughs> right. But you're five people around the world that believe that they're the toughest person in the fucking world, ninjas and murderers, maybe you yeah. know. That, that's how I see. It. I see it like to to do it at that level. Like you really have to be committed and and enjoy it and have that kind of a of a drive. Right. And probably, even then, you it seems like you a lot of guys. It seems like you'd be natural to doubt yourself several times along the way and have to overcome that. You know, that's nothing but respect uh, for people. And and by the way, I, I would. Yeah, I've said before. I, I don't. I don't have a. Very many. I don't have ups and downs when it comes to my emotions. If I get real upset, 
it takes me a fucking day to, to recover. Um, man, to train for months with the idea that there's no way I'm going to lose. This is my fight. I'm right. not going to accept an L. And then to take a nap in front yeah. of the world watching you on TV. Right. And I, to go over that and, and then again and again and again, For I, I don't think I would – one time would be too much for me to handle. For sure. Right. 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 You know, I went to the Fullerton camp down at uh, UFC Training Center, mm -hmm. and I was uh, working with Eric Paulson, you know. But uh, I, t I must have tapped. I, I worked out with him for about a week, maybe a week and a half. I must have tapped about 70 times a day. I believe it, yeah. Man, it, boy, man it's tough, man. It's tough. So, But, but my, like I said, my head is off to him. Even though uh, Brock going, whatever he's going through with him, he's a champ. Mm -hmm. See, so I, I can't knock it. No, no. People are, people are so stupid. Uh, I had one guy that I knew after uh, CM Punk lost his second fight. Yeah. He was he was convinced, this dude was convinced that he could beat CM Punk. Oh and, and, and I couldn't even, like, talk. To, and he's not even, you know, a, a fighter or, or yeah. you know, not even any. And and I, and I, I couldn't reason. I'm like, dude, you're serious right now? And he's like, yeah, I know I can. I know he can. He's got no ground game or whatever the fuck he said. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what, what his critique was, but people are fucking crazy. They are nuts out here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, I, I, that what's, is what makes CM Punk CM Punk is he's not afraid to kind of do stuff, put his self out there, and whether that's polarizing or not it's attractive to people and like it makes it, it makes a connection with people because people want right. to do that. They want to be outspoken or they want to say something or, you know, yeah, true. that's it. So it's just like, they live vicariously through him. So that's what makes him so, uh, so cool. I think. Right. Um, all right. Another super chat for Seth. He said, Oh, hell no. The flip died. Can I tell you about the time that, um, I almost gave Sam Punk a ride to the airport. No, no, I don't, you might have. Yeah. I don't remember though. Yeah. It's a real quick. It's a real quick story. Yeah. But it was during that time when uh, WWE had relaunched ECW, and so we were on the same shows during that. The time when he, uh, I guess, when he was decided that he was the locker room leader, like around that. <laughs> right? It was like around that time, and I just remember like um, one time he he asked if I had room in my car. Um, to and I was like, yeah, I'm by myself, and he said, cool. He just you know. He, would I mind if he rode with me to the airport? And I was like, yeah, no problem. Um, and, and I was just like, you know, that's um, an, an odd pairing. I was thinking at the time, but yeah. whatever. But but I said, I just, you know, heads up, um, it, it will be a smoking car. And then and then he was like, yeah, never mind. Uh, forget it then. I'm good. Right, right. I was like, okay. And in my mind, I always wondered if he knew that I just meant I was going to be smoking or did he think like I was trying to pressure him into it and say, if you're riding with me, you're smoking, you know what I mean? Cause you could take it that way. If someone was going to be a jerk like that and be like, you know, it's, it's a smoking car. So, you know, just so you know, you know what I mean? Like I always wondered, like if he knew that I just meant heads up, I'm going to be smoking on my way to the airport. I wonder if he would have still jumped out of the car option. Oh, man. You know, he's a straight edge. You know, he's that straight yeah. edge stuff, man. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the thing about it was, it, it, you don't want to ride? Bye. You still, you still, my, boy. You still my boy, but bye. That's how I felt, <laughs> yeah. I just we, always think we, like that. We smoking up in here. <laughs> Why would I ever care, though, and make someone else smoke? Like, that's just, right. that's just more of my shit. Right. That's more of my weed. That's like, hey, I meant to smoke a joint. Now I only smoked <laughs> half a joint, motherfucker. Now I got to do another one. Right, right. He probably just didn't want the second hand. That's probably right. Right. maybe. That's maybe. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's say I think it's fair to to leave that up to uh, interpretation though, because uh, right. right, yeah. <laughs> If I ever get him for an interview, I'll ask him that, though. Yeah, yeah. Especially because that's where the boys are. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, um, you, you say you're in Japan or whatever, and, and, and you, you're trying to hook up with someone uh, so you're not alone, and you're like, hey, what are you guys doing tonight? And and they're like, um, oh, we're going down to the city center. Oh, cool. Can I tag along? Yeah. It's going to be a drinking night. That means you're that, drinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> right. That's not what I meant. But. Yeah. Then the pressure's on there. 
Uh, Seth did say, oh, hell no. The flip dive in the Bam Bam match was the best high spot ever. Screw a guy smaller than me doing triple flips, he says. So that's you know that is something that i know the fans take into consideration is body size like i was first starting to hear that other wrestlers looked at me as being athletically gifted amongst you know even amongst them that i was gifted like i, I really didn't know until like uh 96 say, 97 what's right. that is? yeah no i said i'll say you, you were but, but I mean, I, I didn't know. I mean, I was starting to come to terms and understand uh, the way other people were looking at me. Because for me, you know, I'm, I'm a show off. I'm doing whatever I can and trying to be cool and entertaining. But, but I thought that we're all just, we all are just egos in a pair of boots, you know. So I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know other guys were looking at me as right. like, oh, fuck yeah, you know, he's, and then, um, Fuck, what was I going to say about that? Uh, I lost my Size? Track. Was it size you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, size, size. so some people started saying uh, that I was the most athletically gifted wrestler in the business. And I was like, what? Dude, what about like Rey Mysterio or something like that? And they would always say, yeah, but you're 235 pounds doing that stuff, which I don't know if that should be a factor if you're still – but I, I do know that fans feel that way. And also – um, I had to describe wrestling to someone recently that hasn't watched it in decades or whatever. Um, and I was telling them that, that I, you know, I've, I've dropped some weight, um, not on, not on purpose, but uh, eating and uh, peptides and, and uh, you know, getting vascular and, and, and some pretty much everything I did, you know, I right. uh, sat down the scale and I was like, Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But then, right. uh, but then at the same time, like throughout my whole career, there was pressure to maintain that 235 yeah, pounds yeah. You, you or more, that? and I always felt safer there. Yeah, now if I'm like uh, 225, I'm I might be the biggest guy in the dressing room with cages <laughs> in there. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, guys. Remember the days when you were always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get the extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Mm. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in the line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. They always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code RVD at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code RVD to receive your first month free. Visit Blue Chew for more details and important safety information. And we, RVD and I, thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. You know, and I, yeah, I, I yeah, had to explain yeah. to a guy, yeah, there's not as, you don't have to, you know, because a lot of the guys are 190 or, or, or less. Yeah. It, um, and, but, but also it has that, that uh, factor where a lot of the fans watch it and they think I could kick this guy's ass. Right. So I don't know if that's I don't know if that's good or bad, but that yeah. didn't used to be a thing when we watched wrestling. Everyone was a monster, right. two hundred sixty pounds plus, right. and there were guys you didn't want to you didn't want to fuck with. And so it's just how it's changed. So um, even though there's athletic moves and stuff, not everyone looks like an athlete or has a, a athletic physique or, or right. whatever. There's a lot of really ordinary people. Um, looking and it's it, it's just how it's evolved. So uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm all right with it, but I'm just saying I'm aware that the fans do uh, look at it that way and and complain about it like a negative way, like 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 he just did, you know. Yeah. Like Seth was just saying, you know, like I think he's saying, you know, the fuck, am I going to buy a ticket and watch these 
little guys that are my little brother's size, you know. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I got. It goes in cycles, though. I think it goes in cycles. You'll you'll start seeing um, sometimes you you, you had these years where it's lean, you know. No, they lean. I'm talking I'm but you think the style, you know the style will change? Staff, you think the, the style will change in a way that bigger guys will be the, the medium? Yeah, it, 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 it goes in cycles. and uh, but, but we need those small guys too, though. You know, I, I, I hate, you know, a lot of people don't, want, don't believe. I, I, I'm thinking like a promoter. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, I can't do some of that stuff. So come on. You know, I let them come on over and work with me. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, that's it. I said, uh, you, you can do some stuff like RVD a little bit. Yeah, I can. And I, and I see him in the ring. I come on, man. You can come on and work with him. Even though he don't know how to work. <laughs> he can't work that good. But that stuff is impressive. You know what I'm saying? Enough to get the crowd going. So who am I to judge somebody uh, like that and tell that ain't going to work? You know what I'm saying? I don't do that. So. I let them go ahead and work. I don't train people with one arm and all kind of stuff. Nice. But one leg. <laughs> one leg. I had, I had a few with a guy with one leg. You know, really? So, uh, uh, in Fresno. So, um, uh, hip hop. This guy named Hip Hop Harry. But, uh, you know, and, and, uh, so so when he would come in the ring, I, I would work that leg and then the, the, the piss the people off. I would hop on one leg. <laughs> I would hop on one leg and stuff and show them how, you know, yeah, like that. So, you know, but, but, uh, he, he could work. He worked pretty good, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but the crowd loved him, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, it, 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 you had to be a good judge of character, you know, because there's some hit and misses, you, as WWE does. They got some hit and misses, and they missed some good talent and let it go out the door. Absolutely. Uh, they could have they, they made some money with some of them people, man. But see, when you that big monster like that, and you don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't care uh, who, who you're messing up. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you got to watch out for yourself while you're there. You got to know what the hell you're doing and uh, uh, do what you got to do. Uh, but see, like I said, R- RVD, man, the, shoot, 235, flying over the uh, top rope into the rail and like that. Man, that was impressive, bro. Right? Yeah. And him and Mike Awesome. I think then you worked you work Mike Awesome, didn't you? No, we never worked. He, he oh, y'all didn't work. Was- okay. Mike Austin no, was crazy. Too. The match that never happened. That was the big yeah. one. Mike Austin awesome was crazy too, man. Back in yeah, the no, I loved him. I thought he was a great representative uh, of ECW to be the heavyweight champion to take yeah. risks that he didn't even have to take just to right. show off and be extreme. I, yeah, right. so, you know, so it, it was so much talent. I, I, it never, uh, you know, like uh, if I wasn't on the bill, and then uh, shoot, I went on down to Puerto Rico. And uh, got down there, man, and uh, totally different. That's a totally different monster down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm t- <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but uh, I survived because of um, what's the name? Dutch Dutch Mantel was down there. He was doing uh, some of the booking and stuff. Well, a lot of the booking. And yeah. uh, you know, he he told me, uh, you know, he taught me a lot of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but back to uh, what he was saying. Um, with the the size and everything, see my my size is uh, depends on what I eat. I'm I'm around uh, two uh, eighty five to three hundred, uh, and uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it is. yeah. You've always been a big boy. Yeah. How tall are you? How tall are you? I'm six foot three. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So I was about to do. I was about to uh, steal something from Buddy Rose. You know, Buddy Rose. They were uh, uh, announcing. Mm-hmm. They're being in the ring at, from Portland, Oregon, uh, wherever he's from. And then they say, at 200 and say, yeah, stop the guy. He's about to say 200. I do not <laughs> weigh 217. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy Rose, Playboy, no. Buddy Rose. You know? Yeah, but I think it was uh, not 270, 217. 217. He was switching back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slim 217. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, but th- you know that brother could do a one arm push up. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah he would do it. Yeah, yeah. He was in shape now. He might he might look like a dope boy, but that boy put something on you. <laughs> right. You know yeah, he, you know, speaking of Dutch, you know, like uh everybody's every wrestler and every monster has a 
podcast now, yep. but um, <laughs> but I get to where uh, I really enjoy um, some of them, like as part of my day, you know. And yeah. I like listening to Dutch Mantel uh, tell mm-hmm. stories, and uh, I like listening to uh, uh, Nash, Shane Douglas, um, and it's it's uh, I like to get their perspective and just hear them tell stories. I, I like the little you know, three, four minute clips because it's a, a commitment to click. Oh man, I don't want to be still sitting here for 30 minutes. I'll be, you know, I want to do stuff, but yeah. I'll, but I'll watch 20 of the four minute clips in a row. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but man, I noticed like recently, like some guys that I don't even know, uh, I just really enjoy like Bobby, the brain Heenan. Like I didn't even know him, but, but, watching his uh, interview, I'm like, man, I, I love this guy. Like, I remember being a kid, looking up yeah. to him, and Little then Jim. now hearing him, you know, like sitting on the couch in a shoot interview, not only is he entertaining, but uh, genuine and uh, sensible. And, um, you know, I, I feel like Bad News Allen. I feel like I would have really liked hanging out with him. He seems like – yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, he had he had some good stuff, you know. But uh, you know, uh, I, I was a little more obsessed with uh, uh, Ole Anderson. Oh, you know uh, how 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 he was running running businesses and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, uh-huh. and you know, you know, when you're successful, you, you people are not going. Some people are not going to like you, and they, they, you know, and everybody had uh, different opinions about him. I, I, you know, I I dealt with him. You know, uh, I told our video, I ain't gonna even bring it up. The man, uh, rest in peace, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I dealt with him, and he and, uh, and I got his respect. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I can say about that. But uh, uh, he, he he listening to him, and uh, he he was talking to not Stu Hart. What was the, you know they got so many hearts. Good lord, a lot of hearts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, who? Was oh, it, I'm not sure. It, 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 it wasn't Stu. It was uh, one of the other hearts that was Ross, one of the sons, him. Ross Hart, Bruce Hart. Bruce. It might have been Bruce. Bruce Blonde. You know Blonde. Right. It might. Be, it might have been Bruce. But uh, you know, he did an interview with Oli, and uh, that, that's the one I listened to. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm the same way. Like RVD, I listen to. Uh, uh, I can listen to Nash sometimes, but I end up catching myself listening to Arn yeah. Anderson on a lot of things too. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, because I'm, I think I'm not just thinking for myself. I think I'm thinking for other people to help them. You know, that's mm-hmm. coming behind me, and I got a big mouth anyway. You know, RVD already know, but I got you know I got a big mm-hmm. mouth, man, and I talk a lot, man, and I talk to you till you go to sleep. I, I just talk him to sleep. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he be out and just, I say, yeah, RVD, yeah, man. You know when I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. He be knocked out. <laughs> then, then I go steal Sabu's protein when he sleeps. <laughs> protein. Yeah, I tell you, smokes, every smokes time his protein was missing, and, and I finally admitted to him. We was at TNA one time, I think it was all together. And I said, uh, uh, Sabu, you remember all that protein uh, stuff you used to have all the time? It was real good. He said, Yeah, I stole it all the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that shit was good. <laughs> hey, were were you there uh, the the day that Nicole Bass wanted to fight Little Guido over? Oh chicken my sandwich? god! Well, what? That, that was off the chain. Yeah. What yeah, happened there? She scared me. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, she was big, bro. Uh I think it was his, and he left it out, and she ate it. And yep. I thought that it was for just anybody, I guess, something like that. <laughs> right. And he was hot, and he was gonna fight her over it. I don't care. I don't care if she's a woman. You know, was, that was funny. <laughs> you know, I, I used to get I used to get food from Guido because you know he always watches how you know his weight all the time, and yeah. uh, you know we have pizza or something like that. I said Guido, you know I wanted his pizza. So I was like this. I said, uh, Guido, you know, come on now. You got to watch those calories. You know, Mustafa don't really care about it. You know, I just care even, about you know, he said, yeah, Even though he's going to get up and fight. He would, <laughs> he would get me. up and run. While we're on the road and shit, he would get up and run. Right. While we're all sleeping in, in, the, in the hotel room. Like, Three get up at six, 7 o'clock in the morning, whatever right. he had to do. He's crazy. I mean, that takes a lot of... Something I don't have. Right. <laughs> I, I, I can do all that. I can oh. eat his food, though. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Oh man. Okay. Well, we got a couple questions for you, Mustafa, too, here in the, uh, oh, okay. the chat. So, um, one boss gaming one says, uh, "Hi, Mustafa. Ever contacted by WWE or WCW? Obviously, you worked for WCW, uh, but did WWE ever contact you later on when it came?" Uh, uh, man, I, my my brains wasn't right. They're, yeah, they really give it back and. I, I, you know, like uh, I, my, I, I got I'm, my discipline is terrible, except when I come to working out. I work out in a minute. I ain't got no, you know, man, you gotta stop smoking. You gotta, uh, you're drinking. You can't be drunk. You can't be this drunk at this time of the day. And I, nah, man, I, I, don't know. I, I just didn't have. And, and, and plus, maybe you know, people say, well, maybe you wasn't talented enough. Who cares if I was or not? You know what I'm trying to say? Well, they had no discipline enough to go up there. Yeah, you know, like that because tell him RVD knows too. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, it's, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same as is as, as for me. Like people are like, just imagine what could have happened if you wouldn't have got pulled over for the marijuana. Yeah. And I'm like, considering you know where I came from, I made it pretty fucking far to get where I did. You know, you sure so did. Sure I wasn't did. the guy that didn't have the marijuana, but. Uh, but everyone tells their own story about it, you know. It was right. imagine if you wouldn't have been driving and smoking. I wasn't, motherfucker. <laughs> you don't even know what you're hating me for. Right. <laughs> hey, uh, I was thinking about this. One time we're all, I don't know, in a little huddle in the dressing room back in ACW days, and uh, Tracy Smothers, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Rest his, uh, love yeah. Tracy. It was right. so funny. But we're all talking, and then he reaches down, um, into his sock, and he pulls out like a ball of uh, aluminum foil, and he unwraps it. And he's like, "He's like, hey man, you want half? A, you want half a chicken sandwich?" You're right. yeah, I'm like, "No, dude, no." <laughs> I got it in Charlotte on the layover, man. <laughs> how long has it been in your pockets? You know, one time he tried to give me something. One time we was in smoking mouth. I said, "How long has it been in your pockets?" Uh, three days. I said, well, no, I'm <laughs> No, I'm good. <laughs> go, on, go on and kill it. You know what I mean? Hey, someone asked, uh, how did I come up with the Van Daminator? Oh, Jesse. And um, I just remember before my very first ECW match, you know, I had seen footage of it. Uh, and so I knew it was hardcore and I knew I needed some hardcore moves. So I was trying to think of moves that I could do that I hadn't done before. And one of them was like, you know, maybe I could uh, throw a chair up and then do a jumping, spinning back kick. Yeah, and yeah. Into his face. Yeah, I didn't know it was going to be a finisher and, and win me world championships and right, shit like right, that. Right. But, but that's yeah, how I came up with it. And I, I don't know how we got the name. Probably Joey Styles. He usually named my stuff. Would he yeah, just name know. it on air or would he name it with you backstage or something? Uh, I think that um, Joey would. Well, I. <clears throat> Some of the stuff would be him literally calling out what I did, and then that would be the name of it. You know what I mean? Like he'd say, RVD with a corkscrew 360 link drop, and I'd be like, that is what I did. You know? Right. So, right. So some right. of that would be like that, you know, if he's a yeah. RVD with a, with a jumping, you know, with a jumping uh, sidekick fucking whatever, and, and I'd be like, yeah. So a lot of it was like that. The five-star frog splash. I don't remember. I think he came up with that, like calling it. I think, right? And I'm not really sure about the Van Dam. Maybe I did call. I probably did call it the Van Daminator because I heard that and I liked it and wanted to attach it to something. So I probably called it that, but I don't know for sure. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Wow, that's pretty neat too. Uh, Seth just chimes in again. He says, "Mustafa, you're a much more chill dude than I imagined." You were scary as hell in ECW. Respect, bro. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, you, you know what, what was funny uh, about me was uh, I, I realized, I said, man, all this talent up here, man. And I said, well, what am I, what am I going to do? Uh, and uh, I remember, you know, uh, when, I, when I was growing up that uh, I watched Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a couple of things, you know, how he was doing. And, uh, and I bit off of uh, uh, Angel Nyhart. Uh, I, I bit off of a uh, Brute Bernard back in the day. I'm going back now. I'm going back, wow. back. I bet y'all don't know about that one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, uh, and and uh, 
I, I would bite off the, the crazy people because I always thought that some guys talk too normal. Mm-hmm. You know, come on, man. Y- y'all ever been into the pen uh, or something? You know what I'm saying? You, you don't talk like that. You know, uh, I was going to commence the whooping. You know, come on, man. Nobody talk like that all the time. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's some people's style. You know what I'm saying? So I said, let me go and do this crazy stuff, man. So I get that head going, and I still like doing it right now. I feel good. But, uh, you know, and that's what I would do, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Have fun. I just have fun with it. Yeah. and the- you know, I just want to have fun in wrestling and make money. I don't want to <laughs> uh, go through all that. Well, you know, this guy over here, he comes from uh, Brazil, and he needs to be worked in. Uh, I didn't want to do all that. You know, mm-hmm. get, is he going to make some money? Can we make money together? You know what I'm saying? That's how I was. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, it's right. a good balance. Good balance. Um, Stellar Steven, thanks for the two nine dollar ninety nine. He says, "Met Sabu again in Richmond, Virginia. One of the coolest. Yeah, we like Sabu here. Big fans." Hey Steven. man, Mustafa's cool. Sabu's cool. What uh, you know, you're saying my my circle of friends. I'm not going to bring crazy people. You're getting you're getting <laughs> a sneak peek at who <laughs> RVD <laughs> really likes to hang out with when he. When he's at the shows and can hang out with everybody, you know, you get to see who my friends really are. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, and yes, of course, Riddle and I smoked. Uh, of course. Yeah, of course. And in Matt fact, Matt when, I, yeah, when I first met him, it was at a marijuana fundraiser. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I was a... Um, I don't know, a member, um, but also a... Uh, you better be a member. <laughs> yeah, no, but for this th- this particular oh, group, okay. um, that was the... Uh, um, damn, what the hell is it called? Now I'm forgetting what it was called because I haven't talked to them in so long. Um, the medical... Anyway, dude. You, you know they you know they do a, a, a different name for it. Because, yeah. You know, I do, I do, I work, I work at these places too, okay? So they, they got... Uh, 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 this is a medicine for. Come on, man! I know what it is. I don't know. You know, but they do the big words. They do the big words. You know, my friend know. was the president of it. Right. He's not there anymore, so I haven't been. But I used to always be a supporter of them. They get laws changed a lot. And anyway, they also used to do an annual party at the Playboy Mansion. Yes, and that's where I met Matt Riddle and. Right. We smoked in the grotto when I met him. I knew him because I watched The Ultimate Fighter, and he was just on there recently. Right, yeah. Yeah, you know, Dana did him wrong, man. You know, because, you know, it's a taboo. Because uh, they, they got on the uh, the brothers down there in uh, Stockton, too. Uh, the, the Diaz brothers. Oh, Nate and... Uh, yeah, 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 the Diaz uh, brothers. You know, Nate and all them. And Nick, Nick, they, 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 they like to smoke. Nate, especially Nate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and uh, they... they, they uh, we we don't we don't but you let people do roids up in there, you know. And then you let them fly through and say the, the and that that damage your body. That's really damaging your body in the but long. They time. test they test for that, don't they? They test for it, but it depends on who's drawing the money. You know, they let you go. Ask John John uh, uh was that John uh, Bones Bond, Jones? Jones, but yeah, Bones Jones. Yeah. Oh right. He but he also had coke. He had coke. Yes. Yeah, he had coke. But he was a draw. Yeah. And they was like, uh, we'll, we'll work it out. Dana, you're not Dana. We'll work it out. Just go on, go on back exciting. to Arizona. It's exciting to watch. You're right. You know how you do. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and, you know, and people say, well, you know, some people, uh, they let some people go and some people get caught and they, they, they all on them. And I said, well, that's life. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, it was MMP Medical Marijuana Project. That was the yeah. uh, right. big, words. big words, big words. You see what I'm saying? Make it look good. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> Fredo 499. He says, "Hey, who would be in your all top five slash Mount Rushmore for ECW, WWE, and WCW?" Holy crap! That's a lot. Oh, you ain't catching me with that one. I ain't doing that. Right? One. Right. <laughs> how about okay? Let's uh, Rob. How about your name? Top? Some just name some. You know? Well, we yeah, so yeah. like we done ECW. Well, I think we've done all this. I don't know. Let's go with ECW okay. and let's put uh, let's put you. Uh, let's put me and Sabu. Yeah, and yeah. You, you, Taz yeah. That was good. And that was good. Let's put the gangsters and franchise and Raven. 
and um, Dreamer. Dreamer. Dreamer, yeah, yeah. Dudley's. Dudley's, Dudley's good, Dudley's yeah. Good. That might be, oh, maybe also the Eliminators. Yeah, hell, I take Sandman. Sandman was. Uh, Sandman, yeah, duh. Sandman. Sorry. Sorry, heck. <laughs> Right, so uh, that's a lot of Scorpio, the OGs Scorpio, right there. We, had, we, had, we call it out two, two call, right? I mean, it's yeah. I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, even more so part of the regular group. Right, right, right. Steve with Stevie Richards and Blue Meanie, right, Stevie and, Richards, and, right. and Douglas, Blue yeah, Meanie, no, I said and all them. Oh, did you say them? Okay, I might have called them franchise, but oh, same right, right. Franchise. Yeah, franchise. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Could do Scorpio. Could do Candido. Right. But um, WCW, dude, you know, man, that's the one that I watched the least amount. So that would be easy because I had mostly an outside perspective of that. I didn't grow up watching it. I was there for a minute, but I was so green that, you know, I didn't have anything in in proper perspective. But I thought uh, that the top guys there were like uh, Ric Flair and Sting. Mm -hmm. Right. And... um, Damn, I thought it was going to be easy. Those two. Uh, um, well, shit, you back then. had Arn and, and then, uh, uh, you know, the four horsemen thing going on. And mm-hmm. so many different horsemen because you had Barry Windham and all them. You had Barry. Uh, uh, shit, Nash and all them. It was draws. Yeah, I was going to say, NWO, like yeah, if you go. Nash and Hall. Uh, Diamond. Uh, Diamond Space, DDP. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. The Harlem Heat. Yeah, Harlem Heat. Yeah. Harlem Heat. Yeah. Vader. Yeah. Vader, Vader too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. yeah. There's a lot of uh, big Paul White was there. For yeah, the, yeah, the giant. Yeah, the giant. He went over there. Yeah. The, the Cole twins. The twins. <laughs> <laughs> the Cole twins. Yeah, <laughs> what happened to them? I don't know what happened to them, man. Yeah. I don't know what. They, they was cool. It was cool. Yeah. So I we like gave it. some top tens. There we go. We gave some top tens. You're right. You're right. Yeah, Bernard. Five dollars, thank you. He says, "I feel like I reach a level where being around drug-free individuals is extremely limiting, both spiritually and mentally." Can you guys relate <laughs> at all? Uh, well, I've been clean and sober uh, uh, since. Uh, okay, I'm sixty, so I was age forty-two. Wow, and, really? Uh, man, wow. I'm still, but I'm still high. I'm still high. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I walk around and stuff, and I don't judge nobody though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the fellas want to do something. I said, they say, hey, Mustafa, no, I can't do it, but I hang it with you. Let's go. Let's go. I, I get, you know, smoke be going by me and stuff like that, but I can't, I just can't do anything. Because right. I know I go back to uh, uh, total destruction. Uh, it's not, uh, but I don't, but like I said, I don't knock nobody. Hey, dude, do you, man? Shoot, you know, uh, I remember, um, we went to this place one time, and I, I couldn't. I don't drink no more, so I didn't get down like that no more. So the two guys ordered the beer. Another me and this another guy, we didn't want nothing. You know, saying we wanted to just eat and stuff. So it's a drinking yeah. trip, right? You and you know, yeah. you know, you know hey, 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 RV, you know what happened? They start questioning why you don't drink. I said, if that man don't want to drink, he don't want to drink. And then I told him, I said, when I was drinking, I didn't give a damn who wasn't drinking. Icky, icky, icky. Right. Come on. You ever been to Japan when they force you like that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I drink them under the table. <laughs> we was at the karaoke. We be at the karaoke. I tear it up, boy. They was like, hey, icky, them Japanese icky, was like, icky, you can icky. sing, man. You can sing. I said, I know I can. I'm drunk. Shit, I'm, <laughs> feeling, drunk. I'm feeling good. <laughs> right. Give me some of that Korean barbecue, too. Yes. Fuck yeah. Damn, I wish I man, that sounds me great. Me um, and, and 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 for me, I think it's individuals really, it you is. know. Um there's some people that that are that don't do anything, they're completely sober, that I really enjoy their company. Right. There's some people that smoke. I don't enjoy their company. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Overall, I feel like uh, like people that be- I, maybe it's because because I s- smoke weed. Um, overall, I feel like people that are that smoke weed, especially if they're tapped into that that hippie love vibe. I feel like um, that I'm gonna get along more, you know, with them smoother um with, with less conflicting uh right. 
Yeah. So, so I will say that, but overall it's individuals. Yeah. Right. You yeah. Know, I peer, agree. peer pressure, you know, if you're doing it because you want to do it, Yeah. you know, if not, don't feel, uh, uh, I'll threaten something. Yeah, you know I'll what I mean. Or and it's, then I'm not going to preach to you. I'm the shit. I'm the last one. In the hell, I'm yeah. terrible with preaching. I, so I, I would even try all that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, you know, I, I I talked about saying I I wouldn't push you know it on somebody <laughs> anything because I don't give a fuck what what they do, <laughs> but <laughs> but a lot of people will make themselves do it if I'm around. Like if I'm if yeah. I'm in a, if I'm with a couple people smoking, someone that doesn't smoke at all will go up there and they'll be like, Jimmy, you're smoking? And they're like, well, hell yeah, I'm not going to pass up a chance to smoke with RVD, <laughs> even, if, even if it's not their thing. Yeah, <laughs> that right. happens a lot. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. It definitely depends on the individual, I would say, too. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, Stellar Steven chimed in. He just said, I attended a Josh Barnett seminar. Oh, Eric- boy, did he make it? Did he make it through? He was there to whoop your ass. Apparently. Yeah, right? Yeah, Josh, Josh Barnett will whoop your ass. That, he, yeah. He's the UFC champion. Right? Yeah. He's a big dude, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's a he California like the, boy. He don't like the leg slaps. You better not do that. <laughs> <laughs> you do that at his thing. You might. That's the last time you be working for him. <laughs> what what is that? He was doing the uh, promotion called uh, Blood Sport. Yeah, Blood the, Sport. Yeah. I'm ask you about that. If he ever reached out to you about doing that. Um, maybe. Mm-hmm. What is? Is it just a wrestling card, or it's just more of a wrestling? Yeah, it's it's more wrestling oriented, obviously, but it, it's got a different, like, kind of like almost like the um, what is that shit that they used to do? That <laughs> raw underground, but more legitimate looking, where it was like there. I don't think there's ropes, and I think there's just like a fight kind of thing going on, straight up fight. But oh, that's it's different. Like, that's way yeah, different. Than yeah. Just <laughs> Uh, it's like Boss Rootin, you know, uh, Rootin, uh, I hope I pronounced his name right. Yeah, right? you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they was doing that shoot thing over overseas, you know what I'm saying? You remember that? The slap yeah. and then they, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think. There was uh, there was Pancrase and Pancrase right. and then the other one was... Um, Lil Guido I, used to go to that one. You remember that one? He was, he was there with UWF, I yeah, believe. UWF, yeah. right. Yeah, and that was... Uh, Shoot style, uh, shoot style, right? Wrestling, pancreas. I'm blanking. I don't. All right, I allow myself a couple blanks a day because I do pretty damn good with my memory. My memory's getting good, sharper. Huh? Stop. My my memory's getting sharper now than it ever used to be. Is your is that weird? Do you think or or no, does, it, does, no, it have, no. does it go like this sometimes? Because. I'm at the convention. I'm signing. Someone taps yeah. me on the shoulder. You know, I look up and it's someone I haven't seen in six years. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm always, you know, like, hey, oh my God, Pat, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, I never used to be able to do that years ago. <laughs> and now it's always just like, oh. There's a name come to you now, right? Yeah. Man. Yeah, all the time. But um, I ain't anyway, no I don't remember what the other group was. I want to call it ISKA, but that's yeah. not. No, that's not it. That's the uh, yep. ain't that the weapons thing? They do the weapons stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they do the the. Uh, I'm gonna try to think of what the other one was. Strength. Was, Pancrase, you know. but was it? Pride? Well, was UWF though? UWF from Pancrase. Uh, I was just okay. Oh, one is what K-1. I was. K one. That's yeah. K one. Right. Right. K one. Um, let's see. Here's another one. Casey is raw gaming and wrestling. Thanks for the $5. He said, when you won the ECW world belt under the WWE umbrella, how do you feel winning in WWE instead of the OG ECW? I'm just curious. Thank you. RVD for answering. So yeah. How did it feel? Not, you didn't win it in ECW when it was just Paul Heyman's, but then you won it obviously in WWE. How did that, did that feel different for you? What, what were your kind of thoughts process on that. So I was very happy with the way that everything worked out. I feel like I manifested the entire uh the entire pathway because one, if I hadn't brought ECW back by going to Vince and, and plugging the idea and all that, then I don't think I ever would have been beating John Cena, but I was the right foot to put forward when they were really going to try to get behind ECW or make it look like they were behind it yeah, yeah. for a moment. Yeah. So, so, uh, first, so I think that I changed the entire playing field and then I ended up 
uh, being champion. And, and one, when I was in ECW, that wasn't a goal of mine uh, to – I wasn't thinking, you know, like, damn, I got to – you know, how long do I got to keep going before I get a shot at the at the heavyweight championship? I was making the TV championship mean the as much on the card as anything else. They were looking oh, forward yeah. to that and that. So that was important to me. And I did want to wrestle Mike Awesome when he was champ eventually, but down the road um, after we landed a TV deal and all that shit. So, so I'm, I'm glad that, I mean, I don't care that it didn't happen back then. And, right. the, and the fact that I was able to be such a big part of bringing it back, but on WWE's platform, so many more people could see it and then be crowned the king of ECW. That right. was a uh, very, um, very uh, um, vind vindicating, I guess, yeah. for me. Yeah. And, and and um uh you know fucking it was it was because i stuck to the to to my stuck to my guns throughout my whole career when everyone was saying quit doing that shit and right, stuck right. to it and eventually it's because i stuck to it that i went to the top and had that match and it's because of that that i fucking had the uh, wwe and ecw championship Mm -hmm. It's a bigger deal. It feels exactly. like a bigger deal because yeah, it's on the mainstream platform. Plus, it's yeah. what what ECW like grew to be, and then eventually, you know, you got to get on this huge mainstream platform. So I think it's even a bigger deal. Than that. Yeah, and at first I thought it was going to continue to be uh, a big platform, like a third brand, so it would have as many eyes on it as SmackDown or something. And and then I learned right away that they thought hardcore meant uh renting the same shitty arenas that ECW used to rent or ice hockey arenas and then and then not advertising it and then to them that was hardcore so that part was very disappointing right away yeah i believe that <laughs> it's like oh we're drawing the same size crowds that the old ECW did that's right that's not the point here you know <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's not the objective <laughs> Uh, Mustafa, question for you. Stellar Steven chimes in. Mustafa, how was it training with Eric Paulson? Pain. <laughs> yeah. hey, 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 I'm going to tell you what. That man knew a thousand and, and, and two thousand moves, man. And I heard from head to toe. Yeah, but but he was a good, he's a good dude, though. He, he worked with you. And, um, you know, he, he took care of me, man. And uh, tough dude, man. Tough dude. You know, he trained... Uh, uh, Brock Lesnar. No shit, really? They got him ready for that UFC. Wow. Yeah, you, if you see him when the, if you if you look at him in the ring, he's a blonde head dude that was right there standing beside uh, Brock in the ring when uh, I think when he won the championship. Oh, okay. Yeah. He beat mm -hmm. uh, Frank Mir. Frank Mir, yeah, Frank Mir. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, he was a good dude, though, man. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, yeah, when you if you go to one of them dojos like that, if you ain't ready for that pain, go to twenty four hour. You'll be fine. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, shoot, because you because I'm gonna tell you, man. Um, it, it it makes you dig down real deep in places because I, you know, the the. I was one of those kind of dudes that if I started getting a, a little ego a little bit or somewhere, I'd go box somebody or uh, wrestle somebody that was way better than I was and, and uh, put me in my place, you know, and things like that. And then come to find out I was pretty tougher than what I thought I was, you know, too. There you go, yeah. You know what I'm saying, too. So, um, but uh, the the thing about it was I, I, don't, I don't like ego. I don't like I, I don't I, it never made no money for me, you know. What I'm so I, I never really liked it because I was like, man, you got gone, bro. You know, it his show up. Hey, what, what, what we gonna do today? And then take your ass home. You know, I don't need you. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You go gotta go. You know he what gotta be gone. He goes, yeah, right. <laughs> gotta go. Uh, Can't make no money with you. Right. You know what I'm <laughs> so. Here's a question for both of you guys. Rev Robin asks. Any Axel Rotten stories, good or bad? Axel Rotten stories. RVD, you got anything? Because I got a good one. Well, 
I think of my first ECW TV match. I wrestled Axel Rotten the first time I was at the Philly Arena, and he was so over with that crowd. I was surprised because I wasn't used to them, the the, the fans booing me or turning on me <laughs> because – you know, I was down there in Georgia saying, come on, everybody, you know, get in the crap. you know, the USA, you know, all that cheesy stuff. And then here I am, I did, and Axel was like, ooh, ooh, like that. And the crowd popped and they were laughing. I'm like, they're laughing at me. I was like, oh, my God, like, they love him. And I got to win them over. I don't, you know, and, um. I like, you know, the the match, but it was I, I learned right away like that his uh his, him him out there, his craft, let's say, was like was really important to him. And it was like he knew, you know, because it was like I was just so young and green, intimidated, ner you know, even nervous about being introduced there with my rosy red cheeks to <laughs> the EC dub and and it was it made me feel like this is like I'm in his house right now. And uh, and I, I you know re respected him for that. And he had the bat wrapped in barbed wire. Um, and really, the only other story I could think of was the one with uh, him and Candido uh, sharing. You know where I'm going? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, it, 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 yeah, yeah. A syringe. They're both gone. Yeah, yeah right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Everyone knows that, right? Or. Yeah. Well, no, not everybody. But yeah, I feel know. like you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't know if that's you know for for proper consum fan consumption, <laughs> you know. But but uh, but yeah, I, the way I heard it was that they only had one syringe. So um, I think I heard Axel took the new bane, and then you know instead of splitting it half and half or whatever, that he took the new bane into his veins or whatever and that they withdrew his blood and put his blood into mr candido is the way that i heard it mm -hmm. and uh every time i hear axel i'll always think of that he was always a cool guy nice to me that i can you know remember and um that's that's where my mind goes automatically what about you steph well, my, my thing was man we were rolling up in, in, into the, the hotel right in the front right Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, gonna put on a damn wig and a, a dress, come run out there. Well, stuff I love. I couldn't recognize him at first. I was like, <laughs> when I, when, but man, when I found out who he was, man, I was gonna kick his ass. I said, "Man, you got me, bro." Mustafa, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love you. He had a wig on and his dress, and I said, "Man, I'm gonna kick your ass, bro." That's, that, that, that's the one I remember the most. And uh, man, he's good. He was cool though. He was cool with me. You know what I'm saying? We were cool. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sounds like a good river there. <laughs> yeah, well, he got me. I didn't tell he got you, you there. I still remember that one. <laughs> yeah. um, Unsweet Tease, thanks for the $5. He says, good to see you guys. Mustafa, do you have any good New Jack stories that may not have been told before? Rob, we need to see RV Bro tag team in AEW ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, well with, uh, New Jack uh, uh, wanted to funniest ones was us was uh uh we uh we went to this uh club in tennessee mm -hmm. and uh we got down there man and uh <laughs> the the uh guys come in and say, oh, that's what gangsters on and, and, and uh, you know some of the people were happy and then this one guy he did, he just didn't like jack you know what i'm saying so <laughs> jack, jack hit this dude man went out we went out the, the out in the uh, parking lot, and uh, the, the 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 guy said uh, he act like he wanted to fight again, right? But I guess Jack caught him pretty good, you know. <laughs> so the guy said, oh, God. Oh. and then he just left. He didn't say nothing after that, yeah. and I, it made me laugh so hard I couldn't I, because I thought he was gonna do something, right? Uh -huh. And I don't know why I cracked up so hard, man, but it made me <laughs> laugh, and he laughed, and we just went back in the bar. Everybody was laughing and patting each other on the back, drinking and shit. So that, that, that was one of the funniest stories to me, uh, I thought. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
it was some other stuff that we did, man. But uh, you know, I ain't gonna bring that up though. That's that's very incriminating. <laughs> right. But, uh, Not fit for uh right. YouTube Fan consumption. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mustafa, do you remember we talked about this on like I think it might have been our first episode, Rob, was when New Jack hit uh, Junkyard Dog. Do you remember hearing about that, or were you around for that, Mustafa? I heard about it, but I wasn't. You know, I wasn't around, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I'm yeah. curious about that too. It was an ACW show in Atlanta. I wonder if you were there and just not not in that part of the building. The the uh, at that time at that time it, it was like uh, I was I was uh, no I was gone I was gone okay. I, I heard oh, okay. about it uh, mm-hmm. you know they they because they because what they was what I was told was you know uh, you know they had got kind of close and Jack you know thought that uh, you know just like Dusty Rose <laughs> you know what I'm saying everybody got these you have these heroes kind of thing and then. When you finally meet them, they're not as who what quite what you thought they were. <laughs> so, oh, okay. You know, and I ain't laughing at Jack because Jack when he get upset, you know what I'm saying? I, I try to tell him. I said, Jack, no, it, it might not be as cool as you think because mm-hmm. Gene has smartened me up on who was uh, racist or uh, who who was dumb as hell, didn't know how to draw no money or didn't want to make, they didn't know how to make money. You know, and the dumbest bookers to the smartest bookers promoters. You know what I'm saying? So who like uh, little ring boys, who like uh, ring boys? yeah, all yeah. that, all that, yeah. and uh, so um, when I heard about the, the JYD thing, I ain't gonna lie to you, I wasn't surprised because you know JYD was doing his thing, Jack doing his thing, and you know the personality clash, things, flash. Happen. Flash. things yeah. happen, right? Mm-hmm. Things That's are, all I can say about that. Go down, yeah, yeah, You're right. Uh, real quick, uh, stuff too. I wanted to ask about being in Smoky Mountain with um, the gangsters getting started and Jim Cornette being an influence on on some of that aspect and th- that being such a controversial role in that territory and everything like that. what, How was that, being in that kind of element? Well, we had D'Lo Brown with us, too. Yeah, so, that's right. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, he came along. And uh, D- I, I always said this, though. I'm, I'm going to say this part first. I always thought D'Lo would go further than us because D'Lo was more corporate. Mm-hmm. And I'm not putting it in a bad way. You know what I'm saying? He was more corporate, you know, and things like that. And I was, I was, I was kind of wild. And then we know how New Jack is. You know what I'm saying? So right. and it was like, eh, good luck, fella. You, I know you're gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was but, he, uh, was he still uh, like, uh, what wasn't he like quite a bit older and in the business longer than you or no? Who uh, Jack? D'Lo, D'Lo Brown? Or, no, um, no, oh, yeah, no, no, I was thinking no, uh, no, Danny no. Brown. Never oh, mind. Danny Brown, you're thinking Danny. Okay. Yeah, D- yeah. D'Lo, D'Lo was uh, uh so and, so I, and, and, and I'm the one that gave him his name. Jim Cornette tried to say he gave him his name. I don't know what gave because we from the hood, so uh, we, we in the hood and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm from the woods, basically in North Carolina, but it's same thing. Almost. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, so we got with Jim and we was uh, working down at Stone Mountain uh, Center. And uh, shoot, Kevin Sullivan and all them guys there. Uh, but uh, we brought our crew. <laughs> and Macho Man said, God, I don't keep it real. Macho said, God damn, who is these, who is these people? Because <laughs> we had a crew. Boy, we walked up in there, man. And we, we looked buck wild, you know what I'm saying? So uh, Cornette uh, bit on to it. And uh, he said, hey, man, uh, how would y'all like to? And we come up with these names. And then, uh, and, and we, man, me and Jack was always, we was together before wrestling, before he, we didn't know each other was wrestlers. So, but we hung together doing stuff in the street. And then the court the, said, how about the gangsters? And we just cracked up laughing because <laughs> we were doing some of that stuff anyway already in the street. So, so it just made us laugh, you know what I'm saying? So it kind of fit our character, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and uh, I ain't going to sit there and say I was, just, you know, the criminal, and the top criminal and all this. So what I'm trying to say is I had to get mine, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but, uh, we got with Cornette and and Cornette uh, formed the, you know Cornette crazy, you know he's a he's a genius, you know like Heyman, mm-hmm. they genius but they crazy. People mm-hmm. don't know how crazy they are and obsessed. See, in, in wrestling, you meet people and then you meet people like RVD knows what I'm talking about. You go from you went from WCW then you go to ECW then you in the WWE. And you up there with some minds that's obsessed. And that's all they think about. Mm-hmm.
They, they ain't thinking about nothing else. They wake up in the night, oh, shit, you know, and they come up with something, you know, and, and, and that's all they're thinking about. So uh, Cornette was like that, and then he, he formed this thing. We went against rock and roll. We learned to work better. Bullet Bob, uh, Tracy Smothers, uh, all the Armstrongs, Lumpy Dumpy, and all them that was there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because they got some Armstrongs, boy. They got, oh, yeah. they got a lot of them. They got a lot of them. But, and uh, so... Um, that we we learned from them, man, and it was it was great. It was great, you know. Uh, as they see in the as they say in the streets, it was great. You know, it was good, bro. Yeah. Did you know, ever? Because, did you ever meet the wrestler that I was thinking of? Was Danny Brown? Did you ever meet that guy? Danny Brown? No, I never really met oh, him. Man. Okay. He, yeah, was a friend, he was a friend of Eddie Mansfield's, but uh, yeah. Also, I saw him um, in uh, Charlotte when the Manny Fernandez was booking, and right. Yes. All right. Yeah. I don't know why I pictured him when you were saying D'Lo Brown, but anyway, Uh, 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 he's recovered. Manny Manny Fernandez, that's another character, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I always like Manny. You know what I'm saying? You know, some of the other guys, Manny fuss too much. I said, but I'm learning, though. So I I learned a lot from Manny myself. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm, For sure. Um, another d- statement that uh, Stellar Steven says he follows up. He says, "I got Josh to cross. He'll hook me after the seminar." So there you go. I'm with that. <laughs> I bet you that was fun. I bet you, yeah, that was a real hoot. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Uh, I'm trying to think of. There was something else I wanted to ask you too when it came to something. Uh, what was it? Someone had asked about me doing a seminar, and um, I just I don't th- you know I haven't done one, and I don't think. Uh, I don't think that I want to, you know, I don't, I don't think I, I mean, I would love to be able to give advice and help people that are already in the business, you know, and make and help them grow or, um, you know, but um, I, I, you know, I think, I don't think I have the patience to, to do like hands-on training. I think that takes like a special kind of. uh, Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. You you go, see, you, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. You were one of the real good ones. You know, it's kind of like uh, Magic Johnson trying to be a coach. Or like, yeah, they it's always like, You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like Larry Bird was the only guy I know that could that, that was successful in the NBA. And then it's some of these guys that try to coach NFL that's real good. And then RVD's one of those guys that's real good. And hell, you don't have no patience. Maybe because maybe <laughs> and it's okay, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. Do you think? Do you think maybe it's because a lot of what's natural to me, I don't understand why someone else doesn't get it. No, you was you you drew a lot of money, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so you ain't got no understanding of somebody starting out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, so uh, my my thing is is that I I have uh, some patience uh, with it. And then uh, and, and can do it, but not every day. You know, I, yeah. you know, it's, you're gonna do a sh- spot show or something like that, and then I can take some time out to show some people something because I need to warm up anyway. So, and you, you do hear that though too, Mustafa, about like somebody like Michael Jordan, where it's like he's such a great player and like just an amazing <sighs> pop talent. That I think to Rob, what you were saying, like it comes so naturally to him. Right, it probably frustrates him that like, hey, why aren't you getting this? Like, that's well, what you he... ain't getting you. I know I've already. <laughs> right, I know I really did get you. Be like, oh, why you ain't getting this? Yeah, right. I said, you don't do over. it that way. You yeah. know, like how many times yeah. can I say that before yeah. I'm just done? Right. done. Yeah. And see, and then that's where the patience come in at. And uh, you notice that uh, if, if if you think about it, some of the greatest players in whatever sport you can think of was terrible. Trying to coach, right? Yeah, that's yeah. It, it's a very small percentage that mm-hmm. made it. Mm-hmm. Hell, even, I remember. I'm going way back. See, I'm gonna let these people know how old I am. Shit, I remember uh, uh, Will Chamberlain. He tried to coach. Did he? And he he, he just throw the balls out to. The, <laughs> that's all he was doing. Practice. <laughs> he just rolled the balls out and said, "Well, y'all just run down the court." You know, was that just, was it. That's he was just making doing. love to ten thousand women. Ten thousand women. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> He had other priorities going on. Right, right. He had other things going there. Yeah, other things. Uh, right. Rev Robin Robbins, thanks for the two dollars. He says, Mustafa, what was what is the new Jack Sandman lizard story? Man, I don't 
it, it, okay, I, I'm, I will say this. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, I know people want you to remember certain things. I'm going to say this one more time to a lot of the people out here. I was drunk and hot. There's <laughs> a lot of times I don't remember some of the, I don't remember some of the stuff. I, I really, I, I, the, the thing about it was I get with some good party people. I would party with VD, uh, uh, RVD. Then I would, uh, uh, Sabu and, and we would get together and then I go with the pit bulls and we would do, you know what I'm saying? And, and then there's a lot of stuff I don't remember, man. Yeah. You know, and then I'm thinking about, uh, hell, I'm like that unforgiven. You remember Clint Eastwood and he said, yeah, I did a lot of drinking back then. I don't remember a lot of that stuff I did. <laughs> People's ass off. And shit. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, I, I'm, the, I'm the same way. I don't remember. And, and I didn't get in, uh, and I didn't uh, whoop nobody up all the time or nothing like that unless they deserved it. But um, it, it was times where they would ask me, um, you remember that time? And I'd be like, yeah. I got to do that because <laughs> I don't remember it. You know what I'm saying? Because I made sure I was medicated, man. Good, because I give me some good looking, man. And then I get one of them doop doops. You know what I'm saying? And whoop whoop whoop, it's up in the, mm-hmm. up in the sky. Yeah. It's a wrap. You know, off the races. Literally, yeah. a wrap. Uh, we got it. One more here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Prince of P- Ponage, dollar ninety nine. People claiming Cornet racist. What are your opinions? Is Cornet? That was kind of like mm, um, some people thought he was, mm-hmm. but we seen green together, <laughs> and that's all it counted with me. You know what I'm saying? No, you know I see people go on these rant and raves about, uh, but see, I think some people just get upset when they find out somebody just don't like them. That's mm-hmm. all, and then everybody's just not gonna like you. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's the color of your skin, it, it, it could be anything. Sweaty palms, I don't know. <laughs> Sweaty palms, yeah. right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. it's just how it is, man. And, but you have to have the you, you, you got to, this is business. This is a business. This is not to make friends. Like, like CM Punk said on a, a, a promo, he said, "I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money." Right. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I was here to make money, but I happen to have some good people like RVD. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, but 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 I was business. You know what I'm saying, and I, if you didn't like me, I ain't give me my money, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying, right? Uh, don't stop it. They said something about you. They said you don't work that good, and uh, and uh, you're kind of lazy. And I said, I said he paid me, didn't he? And, and then I'm gonna work in the next day, huh? Said, yeah, that's well. So, <laughs> Shit, so. <laughs> right. Per- personally, I tend to doubt it. You know. Um, other than, it, you know, he's a Southern boy, and I think like 95% of the people in the South have some uh, racism in, in them. Um, all of us do. All of them. Okay. All, okay all of so, 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 yeah. So, so probably I that. Moonshine. <laughs> yeah. But I, I doubt that other than just the normal standard of it, which, which you know, um, if you it, here's something that people don't think about. Like, mm-hmm. if you really want to uh, say something to piss somebody off, you're going to think of the thing that would hurt them the most, you know. And so for a lot of people, uh, white people looking at a black person like they're going to think that right. you know, the N-word is going to pop to their mind. And for them, it's kind of like if it was a big fat guy and they were like, you know, mind your own business, fat ass. Right, and they really, right, yeah. they really just throw that in there because they think that it's really hurtful. But it, 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 and a lot of people will do that. But I don't think that that necessarily means that they put the hood on and, and go light the cross <laughs> at night, <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, th- I think I think what it comes down to is uh, the the more um, it, like myself, I I, I didn't um, worry about that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like that. Because I already knew that's out there. Come on, let's, come on, this is, this is, come on, we we grown people here, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's out there. So the the that that was no problem with me. I, I thought that um, he was cool. I thought he was cool. And then, now, don't get me wrong, he could have been. You know, at times, but I know this. I was about that business, okay? Mm-hmm. And then people can get mad if they want to or not. 
don't care. You know what I'm saying? I, I was about that business, man. And um, uh, so, but when it when it come down to it, you know, uh, I, I used to get the N word all the time, and I used to say, "Yeah, I'm a real one, though." You know, what I'm, saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real, I'm yeah. a real one. So, so that ain't bothering me. You know, because I grew up in the NWA era. Mm-hmm. So I was NWA, AZ, uh, Dr. Hey, Dre, you know what I'm saying? You know, because uh, RVD, he, 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 uh, uh, he does one of the songs. He know the, uh, the I song. know every word right. to every song from AZ, right. NWA. <laughs> but I even had to start getting, you know, like their, right. their affiliates, you know, oh, there's Ice Cube and the Arabian Prince. What? Arabian Just, Prince, right. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people forget about Red Man, Red Man, when he went and did his own thing. And, right. You yeah, see what I'm saying? So I came from that era, so when yeah. it came to uh, saying some of that stuff, uh, yeah, I am the real one. You know what I'm saying? So, right. but, uh, but I, but I, but I, but I need that. But but you know, like I said, I was it's, it's about the business, though, man. You know, when it get down to it, and some of those guys would would would, would just because it's something might not go right. See, there's another thing you got to remember too. Mm-hmm. When sometimes it don't go right, then they'll go there. Right. But if they're making their money. They ain't even thinking about the dude like that. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I always like to point out, you know, that I see the bigger picture always more and more, and that's always the 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 better because it's got more information. The bigger picture, but You're right. Um, but so I, I'm always, you know, saying like we're on a movement. We really haven't gone that far since no. like it was illegal to be black, right? And, let me let me put it this way. Mustafa was born and and for like the first till you were probably six years old, that was segregation. It was segregation. Right? Yep. Yep. Since, yep. Yeah. That's that's amazing. Right. People think it was centuries ago. It wasn't right. centuries ago. Yeah, no. yeah, you can look at on our birth certificates. And so my, my grandmother and my mother, they were colored. Okay. Wow. I I was I was a Negro. Okay, and then uh, well, my cousins out there that was Afro Americans. <laughs> they just they just switch it up, and so I accepted black man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a black yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they got the African American thing going. I ain't quite feeling that either. But the, it's all you know. It's the each his own. You feel me? Yeah. So so, but but if you call me the, if you say black man, thank you. You know what I'm saying? That's because that's what I feel like I am. Yeah. So, uh, but you know. Uh, the thing about it was wrestling broke barriers because, am, am I right, RVD? Look at all the, uh, uh, from everybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, from all everybody, Mexican, you name it, was uh, it was wrestling in the 30s and the 40s. Yeah. In all colors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah it talks colors. about so that in the Sheik's was breaking books. Breaking barriers, even though, you know, everybody else was going through what they was going through. But yeah. That's why I love wrestling. Because right. I could go to a wrestling match, like we go to a wrestling match at Charlotte Coliseum, and man, you be sitting beside uh, 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 white folks, and we all sharing popcorn, laughing, high fiving, you know, and all kind of stuff in, in the match. And I was like, man, this is what I want to. This is what I want. You know what I'm saying? I like it like this. You know I kind of, so, I, I kind of feel like there's a there's a wrestler mentality where we feel like. You know, whatever it is that you bring to the table, like, right. that, like that's what it is. You know, yeah. like, like like with Katie, you know, like I, um, uh, it, it, like her being hot or whatever. Like I always feel like that's her gimmick. You know, yeah. So, yeah. so so I'm not so I've never been like one to fanboy. Oh my god, because I feel like um, yeah, you know, that's what you do to use to get money and or for business and capitalize on it and boom, boom, boom and. And, uh, you know, like Sabu would look at somebody who was all scarred up the same way. I remember yeah, yeah. actually that had scars on his face. Uh, and oh, oh, remember the heel in a James Bond movie? It had the real big jaw. Not the not the old original one. I know you uh, But, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, he was jealous. He was jealous of this guy. He said, man, yeah. I wish I had a jaw like that. I'd make some money. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, we got another super chat. We can't, we're not going to do all these memories, but let's. Uh, Fredo asked any memories of Big Daddy V. So, Viscera, do you guys have any relation to the Viscera, Viscera by chance? 
Yeah, yeah, man. Absolutely. He's been around forever. So I met Viss when I was rolling through in 92, uh, when I came through uh, w, or South Atlantic Pro Wrestling with Manny Fernandez. Oh, yeah, that's right. Huh? Yeah, yep. Uh, that's where I met Viscera. And then later on, in, uh, and that's when I was 20, uh, 20, 20 years right. old. Yeah. Wow. And then, then later on, like when we were both in WWE, he was telling me like, man, I, I always, we always knew you were going to make it, man. You know, like we, he's always been like real supportive and real cool. And then uh, he was on my movie, Wrong Side of Town. Yes. Okay. I do a fight scene with him and stuff, you know, and I remember, I remember him saying, man, this is your big chance, Rob. This is your big chance, man. You're about to blow the fuck up. <laughs> Batista said something similar to that too, you know, like, man, you're going to surprise a lot of people. And, and then, and then the director uh, was wanting me to, uh, to maybe star in this, this, this other movie that was like, seven times the budget that was written by the guy that made Die Hard and all this. Mm. And I was like, fuck yeah, man, I'm going to be an action star. This is awesome. Right, right. And then just nothing, nothing happened. Right. <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead, nothing happened. <laughs> instead, that happened. Yeah, you look like a crazy business, man. Right. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm not. I'm not one of those delusional actors. It's like I just need to be seen. Like for me, I'm like, oh, watch something a little more recent. You know, after I learned yeah. a little bit to to act. But but also, um, they were gonna roll right into doing like parts two and three and fill them together, and then nobody wanted to work together anymore after Aww. after doing it. But exactly. Yeah. For a minute there, talking about ego, for a minute there, uh, I remember when I'm driving to the set um, from from my hotel to the set, I would, like, not have a seat belt on because it made me feel like an action hero. <laughs> and I would just be, like, zooming, like, speeding, going through everyone. Watch out! Action hero coming through! Yeah, baby, action right. hero. <laughs> Getting yourself prepped. That's method acting right there, actually. Right. Yeah, yeah. Method acting. Yeah. <laughs> I let it. I let it go to my head for a minute. It was a. It was a fun little fantasy. There you but go. Wait, I'll just. I'll be like lined up with offers, just like with wrestling. But it'll be like, you know, B action movies. You know, like <laughs> B action movies. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mustafa, any? Uh, did, did you ever have any actions with Viscera or anybody? I, you know, I, I never uh, met them, man. Like, I, I think I, we, it was a pass through kind of thing with them when they were. Uh, what was the name of the, 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 the when they first got there? Well, the he was the tag team. Mabel, when they're Mabel uh, and. Uh, yep. Yeah, it, it was just a very brief thing, man. Seeing that was it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Well, cool. Well, guys, it's been a blast. Um, Mustafa, is there anything you want to get over, or promote, or anything like that that we can get at? Yeah, I got a, a, a T-shirt out, man. I got a, a collectible uh, stampede, and uh, Heath uh, Slater is going to be uh, at our show, S SPW, uh, April the 21st. Uh, that, that, that will put yeah. That, you know what I'm saying? So I got a T-shirt out there, you know, and I got the, the two S's. is got that, uh, that, uh, money, that, that money sign on there, so... People, even if you don't like Mustafa Saeed, if you get that shirt, you you, you might come into thousands or millions of dollars one day. So, yeah. You know, yeah. Ching, ching, yeah. Ching, ching. Right. You know, because I got the thing that uh, money loves me. So that's one of my, that's my gimmick now. You know what I'm saying? So, and, uh, it was, it was the truth. Some things have increased. Since I, 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 I'm i glad I had a big mouth about it. You know what I mean? To be honest with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but, uh, man, I just go out there and I work, man, a little bit, man, and do what I got to do. And uh, that's it, man. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, the I, I went down there and, and checked out. Um, oh, God. His, his name is. Uh, man, I'm a miss. Will Hobbs. Will right. Hobbs. Down oh, yeah. Powerhouse. Powerhouse. Yeah, Powerhouse. So, uh, Powerhouse, you know, we used to work. I used to work him in Cali, too. So, and uh, he called me and said, man, can you come down to uh, AEW? And I said, man, you know, I don't want to mess your thing up, man, if I get down there, because I don't know how these fools, you know, the train mess. So I seen some more Joe, and it was cool, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so I went down there. It was in Stockton, Stockton, mm -hmm. California. And, uh, you know, they got a good setup, man, you know what I'm saying, and everything. Uh, and everybody's saying this and that, but they still running. That's it. That's it. You can talk all you want to, just like WWE. WWE finally going to get shut down. I said, Boy, you own something. Just say, 
<laughs> yeah, this way you go, man. Ain't, that machine ain't going nowhere, man. Come on. Wrestling is super right. hot right now. And it's like right. there's, there's so much wide open for people that, you know, if you are a fan of the, like the athleticism and the high flying and all the quick wrestling and stuff, AEW has that for you. But there's also a little variety on both promotions, too. So it's like. Oh, yeah. And if you like death matches where people don't wrestle but hit each other with light bulbs and dive on cement unsafely. Yes. There's that also. There's that for you out there too, if you're looking. For you, know, you want the backyard? You can go and hit the backyards because I copy all that shit. Mm -hmm. I bite it. I bite. You know, I I, I go back to, uh, man, I'm a fan of uh, going back to the uh, watching the 50s and, and stuff like that. So uh, I watch Buddy Rogers, uh, Killer Kowalski, and all, all those guys, man. Don Leo Jonathan. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and all these guys. And, and I. I I'm just uh, I, I'm I'm hooked. Shit, I, I, you know it, it, it's kind of like somebody. That, uh, and I'm not uh, uh, making fun of it, but it's kind of like somebody can't get get off of heroin. <laughs> I can't get off of pro wrestling, man. <laughs> I get to watch that stuff. Bro. Do you see Antonio Roca? Yes, mm. Antonio Roca. I guess I get. I've always uh, had people compare myself. That's what I was about to say, man. You remind really? me of a lot of that stuff that he was doing. I think he didn't he tag with Dominic Danucci too. I think if I'm not mistaken, I probably I with Dominic Danucci. Seems like Dominic Danucci though. He, I mean, but I, I, Argentina cast, Apollo, he the did original Sheik and stuff like that back then. Wow. Right, hmm. I'm going back, so I'm going back, back. But the original uh, Sheik, right? The original yeah. Sheik, yeah, yeah. Mm, there you that go. The, the draw, that was the draw, boy. And you know, and these guys, you know, like Abdullah, you know, uh, even though you know he's saying bad things about Abdullah and stuff like that, but I ain't gonna lie to you, Abdullah scared the hell out of me, right? When, when I was at Charlotte Coliseum, you know, before it got in the business, now now we got in the business, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, but you know, when we was little kids, and Abdullah come running out there, man, I took out, I took out running. I ain't no Fuck yeah. I mean, I was about uh, 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 11 or 12, man. I took off running, boy. It uh, <laughs> scared the hell out of me, man. You know what I'm saying? And I used to tell him about that stuff, you know, when I, when I went to Japan with him. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and everything. So, uh, and, and uh, the Sheik, too, the original Sheik. Man, dude, the, drew money, man. You know, and, and, and I think that things get mistaken a, a lot of times because uh, uh, the fact is, is that it, this is a money-making business. And and some of the guys that get up there and, and they get cut or uh, whatever happens to them and stuff like that, they don't understand that, man, you got to get you, you gotta get your, yourself in there. You got to get yourself in there where they can't uh, get rid of you, you know, for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Just stay up in there, do what you got to do, and uh, quit worrying about these little small stuff. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. the little all. BS that goes with it all, for sure. Right, that, and use that towards life in in general. Yeah, right? don't, don't sweat the small shit. Yep. It's a great, right. it's a great fucking lesson for the for the week. Exactly. And Melly, I can answer this one for you. Four ninety nine, Rob Van Dam. I met you in ICW. It was one of the best moments ever. My question is, who's your dream opponent, and when will we see you next in AEW? We'll see him next at four twenty. On AEW Collision, so be on the lookout for that. Rob, who would be your dream opponent? I know we've talked about that plenty of times on here, but hmm. well, I don't know if I have one guy. I don't usually do like fantasy matches, but I would like to work Swerve again. I really liked our, our match and. That was just the first time, and I didn't know him. Like, we would totally take it to another level. Um, I would like to wrestle uh, Brian Cage. Um, I think it would be cool to wrestle Jericho again. Wrestle yep. him lots of times in the past. Christian, same thing. Yeah. Um, I owe uh, Jungle Boy also a, uh, a W. Yep. And uh, so um, those are those are some names right there. Yeah, there you go. And, and people who chime in, Will Ospreay's the been been the big name floating around. For right, years. people people drop that uh, that name a lot of times, and want to see that. <laughs> oh, shizzy, yeah. Oh, shizzy. All right, we got one more, and this we'll close out with this one. Last question: Did anyone want to fight JBL after his clothesline? I don't know why it gave me hardcore Holly vibes a little too much. 
did anybody get ticked off at JBLs for his lariat? I mean, you, you guys know Stan Hansen. I mean, that was who. <laughs> yeah, I, I work Stan Hansen, so I mean, it, it wasn't no big deal. I mean, he throws it, he throws it stiff, and don't be in the business if you can't take it. <laughs> That's it. You know, yeah, I, there's yeah. certain there's certain moves that you just know are going to be real stiff, mm-hmm. and, and and so for me. I feel like that's a green light for me to, yeah. So, yeah. If someone's gonna really lay, it, even like well, like chops for some reason, and I'm not a chopper, and I hate that every single match has to have a cha- a chop contest. Right. Yeah, I don't. Like um, but uh, for some reason, they said wrestlers like they think it's okay to chop hard as hell, so the handprint is three inches deep in there, right. but then. But then they don't want to catch a kick upside their head. Right, I, right. Yeah, I don't go for that. I say, you know, tit for tat. Uh, and speaking of titties and tater tots, uh, I think maybe that's what I'll have later on. Ooh, that's what a combo that is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know, I, I was uh, when I worked uh, Stan, and I knew Stan was, was going to be like that. Brutal. So, he was yeah. so brutal. And, uh, uh, I you see, but I was so green in the business at the time. I thought that was normal. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, the uh, they they would ask me, man, the, how you feel? And I said, shit, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So because I, you know, I did some contact stuff myself with boxing and stuff like that. So you got hit upside my head a few times, and uh, you know, so uh, when uh, the, the keeks and all that, they were stiff. It was okay. It was okay. Real you know stiff. What time? One time when Stan was my if they were trying to really hurt you now, that was yeah. a difference. That's a difference. Or or by some, or not trying to hurt you but being careless. Yeah, it could be careless. And That's... I had this one shot. I had this one shot where uh say for instance you get up knocked upside the head and like the dude didn't really care. I would I would I would do the short shot to the uh to the ribs. I got that from uh, Johnny Valentine. <laughs> nice. So I do that short time. That, oh, and you see all the air be gone, and they go to uh, Alaska somewhere. You know what I'm saying? All the air would go to Alaska. Yeah. And, uh, one, they, oh. one, one tour in Japan, like I was so excited to be there, and it was right. like maybe the second night in or something. Stan was my partner, one of my okay. partners, behind me on the fucking uh, apron, and he, for no reason – uh, just to be a bull, he comes. He comes in uh, from behind me and puts both put, puts his hands on my head and You're just right. pushes pushes me sideways You're out of the way. He yeah. just comes in, you know. And, and and he was like that, but it yeah. kinked my neck, and and, I, and then it was sore like the entire tour. And then oh, I felt limited, like every night I was feeling like, man, I wish I was at my best, but. This asshole, <laughs> you know, when I was young and green, I mean, that's how I felt, and I still yeah. do now. Looking at the bigger picture, I still feel like that, you know. And yeah. I, get, I get that's him, that's what got him over, but still, that is totally he didn't give a shit. He didn't, he, he didn't, he, he, he hit you, bro. You know, I remember one time, uh, he threw me off and uh, he gave me that uh, that, that, that back elbow, he knocked me in the next week. Boom, I, ain't gonna lie. I flew down and I looked up in the I looked up in the, uh, the, uh, the lights, and I was like. Okay, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then you grab me. Then it was like a tornado when you work. <laughs> because th- that's where I learned that I don't have to wrestle like I, I, my technical stuff. I knew that wouldn't draw a dime for me, you know, at all like that. So I had to do the kicking and punching and running around, you know, the uh, brawling and stuff like that. And uh, shoot, he gave me the green light, you know, after I got in the ring with him. So I was like, okay. I, this is me right here. I can do this. I can do this. I can keep going like this. But all that headlock takeovers and, 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 and arm drags and stuff like that. Now, it played its part. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong. If, if you do it rough style, I like it like that. But when you had to do it and you had to be technical and really, uh, oh, God, uh, God, I take that. And like some that. people, and then the, the other, the dynamic of punching, kicking, or doing just laying it in is fucking different for everybody. It's less right, right, right. right. Mm-hmm. You know, like I could chop, I can chop and make it sound off without even touching it. Right. Mm-hmm. You see, what I'm saying I can, I can, I can pop you by, by your neck, and then you wouldn't even feel it, but it'd be like a pop. You know, like and people, ooh, ooh. you know, I knew how to do both ways because Gene Anderson whooped my ass both ways. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to tell you, you know what I'm saying? So I know how to do it, shoot style and uh, work style, you know what I'm saying? So, right. <laughs> and I would <laughs> take that. If, but if you got a, uh, if y'all drawing money, why would you hurt your partner that you're going against? Yeah. Why, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why would you? I, let's do a parallel. No, bro. Uh, hey, the answer, hey, the answer though. Drawing the too answer. much money to be doing that crazy stuff right now. We ain't doing that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't worth very much back then. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Hey, that, but the answer to that is not that I know of. I don't know of anybody ever being mad at JBL for throwing a stiff uh, clothesline. Yeah, no, I thought shit. That's what they do. Yeah, that's that's the name of the game. It ain't well, <laughs> maybe Blue Meanie. Yeah, because they, he, I know they had beef. Yeah, that was ugly. That was a, like a bullying aspect too. I think to it too. I think if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember. Yeah, I think they get, uh, yeah. they get mad. You know, a lot, a lot of guys get mad, and uh, you know they see that Blue Meanie was a threat, uh, not in a way of hurting them and stuff like that. Just why they bring him up here? You know, get guys get mad. I think he made fun of them too in a promo, like, yeah, mm-hmm. right or something. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then I know Stevie Richards gave him a stiff chair shot back. I think, like, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what kind of happened. But dang, this was awesome. Uh, stop yeah. With that. This is good awesome. This is I appreciate good. this, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Good talking to you, Mustafa. Good catching up. Oh, good yeah. Vibes. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, good thank vibes. you for on, bro. You know I, wish, you uh, I wish I could uh, show you my theme music. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to, I'll have to email you the song. <laughs> just, yeah, just send it to me, man. I'll send it to you. Text it yeah. or whatever. You know what right. It's, it's good stuff. It is good stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, this weekend, I am at Squared Circle in Indianapolis. Ooh, oh, nice. Yep, so I'll be there uh, Saturday. Um, there's posters up on my website, robvandam.com, uh, besides social media. And uh, what else I got? Oh, sh- shucks. And then it's WrestleMania week right after oh, that. Huh? Week is coming up there. I'm scared. Oh, boy. There's so much to do, and I'm, I just feel like the pressure because it's going to be so busy. Um, but it'll be good. But I'm just like, I don't know. When I think about it, then I start like, you know, because other people are trying to squeeze me in, you know. And I, right. well, if you, if you can have two minutes to just pop up, you know, stop in here, whatever. And I'm like, oof. We'll see what can happen. It's, it's, it's going to be a stacked week. It's a stacked week. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, Mustafa, you do conventions sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, don't see you, I don't see you too often. I think the fans would love to see you. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you you know, if 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 I work through you, man, you can book me something uh, uh, like that. I will do it then. Yeah. You know right on. <laughs> man. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Go, well, man. I, it. I, I mean, I would do it. I wouldn't turn it yeah. down. I mean, no, no I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Enough said. Absolutely. Uh, we'll talk about that more. YouTube email. So he's. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hopefully we get it by next week. Otherwise, we get. So, so basically, he's guaranteeing we'll get either the remix or the official rights to use it by next week. That's what I heard him say. <laughs> That's what you heard. That's, That's what you heard. Right. Yeah. Yeah, don't forget the singlet contest too, Rob. Yeah, um, man, we're getting so many entries. We have a coloring contest going on. Uh, people, uh, you go to robvandam.com and you get the drawing of my outfit, Joe Holland. Okay. My airbrush artist made it, the same guy that's done all of my outfits since 1996. Man. 95, actually. 95, I started. Uh, doing these outfits. They got more and more elaborate. Still, same guy still doing it. And uh, he had this idea. So so the fans are coloring it and then sending it back in. Okay. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're planning on uh, putting the deadline at 420. I can't imagine how many we're going to have because, like, within the first week, we already had, like, so many interested people. And uh, apparently it's fun. Everyone seems to think it's really fun to do it. So um, I talk to Joe about it every week. Just talked to him yesterday about it. And uh, he was talking about, you know, how we narrow it down to 20 or so before we pick the winner and some ideas that he had. So uh, pretty stoked to be doing that. RVD always looking out for his fans. Mm-hmm. You know. 
And then he'll, he'll wear it on TV too once again. I'm going to wear that. He's going to actually airbrush a real outfit, uh, just like the the one that they color, you know, an inspiration of that. And then I'm going to wear it. Boom. So, boom. Boom. You can send oh, your submissions into rvdebay at gmail.com. RVD oh, cool. Gmail.com. Yeah, we didn't. We're working on getting another uh, email address, but so far that's what we got. So, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Exactly. All right, man. Thanks for so This was a blast. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Have an Thank excellent you, weekend. Thank you, bro. Yep. Yeah, yeah, man. Talk to you guys. Yeah, Have an excellent weekend. Yes, thanks, sir. Beth. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Van Dam fam. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for the Super Chats. We'll see you next week on One of a Time with RVD.